Carroll's team will kick off, and that means that he will have the famous 12th man roster out there. Now, these fellas out there waving their towels now are not on scholarship. All of these men, and everybody's getting up for them, are people that simply come out and volunteer to be on the kickoff team to bring alive the legendary 12th man here at Texas A&M. And now deep for SMU is Andrew Livingston averaging better than 28 yards per return. Now remember, that's a bunch of scholarship folks from the Mustangs out there and non-scholarship folks, the 12th men, the 11 12th men of A&M, they only play on kickoffs. It is unique. And Slater kicks off. In the end zone, Livingston will not bring it out. They'll come out to the 20-yard line. First and 10. Don King will bring it out, the senior out of Dallas, Texas, number two. Running backs, Reggie Dupard, number 21, and the blocking back, Gary Hashaway, number eight. The wide receivers with Pleasant out of last week's game. Jeffrey Jacobs expected to start there tonight, and there he is, number 14. Ron Morris, 23, is the other. Albert Reese, 88, the tight end. Frenstein and Dunn, the tackles. McKinney and Richard, the guards, and Edson at center. First down, SMU. And guess what? That is King handing off on a fake to Dupard and carries the ball himself, but a flag is down on the play. Well, we're not quite sure what that flag is. And as referee Joe Thomas calls timeout, they're saying it is against the Aggies. They're holding. They got a first down on the rollout by King anyway, Paul. They will say they'll refuse this penalty because they get 11 yards or 12 yards instead of the 10. All right, now let's go defensively for the Aggies. Rod Sadler, number 99. Sammy O'Brien, number 90, is at the nose. Jay Miller, 82, the other end. Linebackers for them. John Roper, 83. Larry Kelm, 65, the leading tackler. Donnie Holland, number 11. And again on the outside, Todd Howard, number 73, the leading sacker. The corners, Darrell Alston, number one. James Flowers, number 15. Strong safety, Domingo Bryant, who had that great game last week against Rice. And Kit Coyington, number 10. Jim, they also penalized them 10 yards after the play, so it had to be when the play was over. Now Dupart carries the ball for the first time and gets maybe five yards and moves out to the 45-yard line. Dupart, the leading scorer in the nation, tied in touchdowns with Bo Jackson, who seldom played today after a deep five bruise. And Dupart has his 13 touchdowns in six games, whereas Jackson had his in seven games before today. Second down and five. In the trains at Jackson, Heisman Trophy candidate leading goes out with the five bruise. Chuck Long had a bad day against Ohio State, and Keith Byers did not play for Ohio State. Second down and long five. And again, King with the ball rolling this way and throws, and boy, did he take a belt. Did he take a belt from Todd Howard, the outside linebacker, number 73, the junior from nearby Bryan, Texas. It is third and five. Jim, that time King rolled to the outside. He rolled to his left, to the right of the defense, and the man, number 47, who was the fullback, Morrison, did not block Howard, number 73, and he was right in King's face. I had the feeling that King could have run with the ball. You can see SMU successful on third down conversions. This is third, a little bit better than five. And here's King back to throw as the time across the middle it is knocked down. A fine defensive play by Johnny Holland, number 11, peeling back. Ball to down the field along. Dale Austin was helping him out. Ball is intended for Ron Morris downfield. And so now that will bring on Dodge Carter. And he is a transfer from Texas A&M. And he very quickly kicks the ball away. They've lost it in the rain, but recovered the ball on the 18. So, one first down for SMU. But now the Aggies have the football in the first quarter. Mazda, Honda, Choosing the right import can be a nightmare. Cold. Cold? But the 86 Cold is a dream. Easy to buy and with all the quality and features you expect in Japanese cars. Colt is important for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. Colt, it's all the Japanese you need to know. Bob, do you feel a draft? Introducing the UPS Next Day Air Pack. It's made of 100 micron waterproof, tearproof polyolefin. Just like our competitions. 
It has a hot nail adhesive flap with peel-off release, just like our competitions. The only difference is most of our competition charges twice as much. Either they're paying way too much for their envelopes, or you're paying way too much for their service. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. CFA Saturday Night on ESPN is brought to you by Colt. Imported for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. By UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And the Aggies will start at their own 18-yard line. Kevin Murray, number 14, the quarterback. Heath Woodside, 33. Anthony, 20, 25, the running back. Shea Walker, 85. Jeff Nelson, number 8, the wide receiver. Sylvester Morgan is a tight end. There's a little flip pass out here intended for Harry Johnson, who has started in there on offense. Cheek and Williams, the tackles. Wide end, Dawson, the guards, and Wilson, the center. Defensively, for SMU, the front three, Joe Phillips, 91. Jerry Ball, gee whiz, 34. He's something. You'll see him. Wade Johnson, number 80. Your linebackers, four of them. Monty Gowen, 35. TD Briggs, 54. Kit Case, 44. Vanille Stozier, 99. Corners, Roderick Jones, 1. Mark Vincent, 15. Safeties, Keith Brooks, 13. Frankie Thomas, 29. Second down and 10. And there's a pitch back, and that is Johnson running again. And not very far, is he, as Wade Johnson came over there, along with Kit Case. And it is third and long. Jim, this is, watch Kit Case, who's the inside linebacker. The man we talked about, two interceptions last week. But watch how he just fills the hole. And then sacrifices his body. He goes up over the top of the back, coming out the block, which is Vic, number 43, and in to make the play. Third down and nine. Ball just over the 18. No score early first quarter. Evan Murray fires for the sidelines, and it is caught across the way by Shea Walker. Defensive man tried for the interception, didn't get it. Walker made the catch first down. Kevin Murray, now you got to understand, he played baseball. This is not a bad quarterback. He goes back and he looks off to his right, and then he comes back to the left-hand side. And the problem here is that Mark Vincent, number 15, Jim, when this ball is thrown, he tries for the interception. Walker kept his eye on the ball. Roger Vick is the lone running back there with Johnson, the flanker, and that is Roger Vick carrying the football. And Vick gets some yardage there. Tackle made by Gowen, along with Jerry Ball. Now, Gowen is a linebacker on that side, but Ball is the nose man who came down the line of scrimmage to help out. The problem that Texas A&M figured they would have with Jerry Ball, number 34, Jim, is his quickness. You may stop him at the line of scrimmage, but you've got to get him off his feet because he works himself so well down the line of scrimmage, and there he is in on the tackle. Second down and seven to go. Ball just over the 35-yard line of the Aggies. Only a couple of minutes have gone by here in a rainy first quarter. You got a triple formation left, Jim. You have two wide receivers and the back is in the slot. Sorry, the quarterback. Scoring on nearly every down. Boy, he gets belted also. The ball is caught again by Shea Walker. Right in front of Mark Vincent, who was over there before, trying for the interception. This time, Walker makes the clean catch, first down near midfield. Walker makes the clean catch. Brewery takes a shot because coming right up the middle, no one blocks the inside. That's T.D. Briggs, number 54. But look where this ball is, Jim. To the outside, no chance for Vincent to make the interception. Walker Woo! makes the catch. It's another first down. And there is the Oh, look at me, a pretty ball. Woo! Woo! First down and 10. 48-yard line. Roger Vick remains a lone setback, number 43, and he's got the football. Oh, lost the ball. It is still scooting around, and it may be that it was recovered by Jeff Nelson. That's who did it. Yet little Jeff Nelson, 5-9, came back, and that break goes to the Aggies who have a first down at the 41-yard line of SMU. Jim, this is Vick. When he goes into the hole, the ball's going to be stripped out. It looks like the hole is opened up. A hand reaches out. Jerry Ball, number 34, is the man that knocks it away. Now, look. There are two SMU players there, and there are three of them there, but Nelson ends up with the football. Leading pass receiver in the Southwest Conference has those good hands. Vic remains your lone setback. And he's got the ball again after the fumble 
Nolan has got a couple of yards, and that is about all. And T.D. Briggs, who is the second leading tackler, second only to Kit Case, the two inside linebackers, are the leading tacklers, makes the stop there. 12 10 to go on counting. First quarter, College Station, Texas. Paul and I'll be back here Thanksgiving night when the University of Texas comes in. And the question is, will these teams have their bowl hopes alive by that time? Bobby Collins, his team cannot go to a bowl. We all know that. But as Jackie Sherrill said, and Fred Akers said last week before Texas played SMU, they have got the greatest amount of talent in the land today. And now you can see limping off the field, number 50, Matt Wilson, who is their starting center. A sophomore out of Spring, Texas. He's got the concern Jackie Sherrill. And so they'll bring Jerry Fontenot in. He is outstanding, and he is just a redshirt freshman. Oh, they like him. That's Vic again. Oh, wow, he lost the football again. That's the second time he's fumbled. This time it is number 44, Kit Case, who had two interceptions and a fumble recovery last week, recovering the ball inside the 40-yard line. Roger Vick in this rain twice has fumbled. Jim, I think we're talking about ball that you have to stop. And I think Jerry Ball is the man that gets in the hole. Look at this. He gets off the center front, though, who just got in the game. Here comes Kit Case with a fumble. Now, he got one last week. Two and two weeks, that's not bad. Look at Ball. He just throws the center away right here and back in, makes the hit on Vic. No score, early first quarter. We're not a company, but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career, a career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company, we're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. We'll miss the dance recital. And I'm the star. No problem, ladies. Watch this. No one has rougher terrain than Japan. That's why they need rugged four-wheel drive. Where's my star? My butterflies! And that's why they build the 86 Colt Vista. Imported for Dodge and Plymouth. They're here! Built by Mitsubishi in Japan. Colt. It's all the Japanese you need to know. Sunday, the Flyers are setting the pace in the Patrick Division as they host the LA Kings live. It's the NHL on ESPN. Sunday. First down, SMU on their own 37-yard line. King on the handoff, and that is Jeff Atkins with his first carry of the day. And making the stop there is number six, Domingo Bryant, who, like Kit Case, on the other side of the line of scrimmage, had an outstanding defensive game last week. Jim, I think if you're going to run at Texas A&M, I think the best place to run at is up the middle and, and use the beef that you have. Once you start scraping to try and get to the outside, Morrison is a blocker, but you're going to see Bryant come in number six from a safety position to make the play. That play takes too long to get there. Quick, quick openings up the middle from tackle to tackle. Wide receivers bringing the plays. Adamson has just brought in this, and that is he in motion from the 39-yard line. Ball handed off again to Atkins again, and the tackle is made by number 65, Barry Kelm, who is a leading tackler. As he gets across the 40 to the 42, it'll be third down and about five. Here's a little bit of that cross action, and, and you're going to see the guards are trapping. They're coming down from the outside. Richards, number 77, comes into the hole. Now, he's there. Atkins gets it. If he gets one more block downfield, he may have been able to spring it, but not with Kelm sitting there. Third down, a short five from the 42-yard line. Uh-oh, uh-oh, that may be the first down right there as Kobe Morrison carried the ball, but it may be that the Aggies jumped and that would be an automatic, although I thought I saw one of the officials pointing toward SMU. Now SMU's pointing the other way. They always do that. They point the other way. Jim. But you know what's going to happen? They're, there's still going to be third down, but they're going to be about the nose of the football away if they take it back and mark it where it was before because they have to get to the 40, almost to the 47-yard line. Well, they're still discussing it. Well, you take the penalty. I, mean, I would. I, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. I don't know why you would discuss it. I think if you simply step it off, give me the five yards and another down. And I see where his foot is in the back now. It depends on where he puts his ball down. Whether it's going to be a first, it's going to be a first down now. Normally, it would not have been. Oh, how many times did John Madden complain about where they put that right foot down? Left foot, right foot. Left foot, right foot. That is a first down. Ball at the 40. 
the 7-yard line, the 10-25 to go. There's a Fedora. The, the Corps Cadets, they stand through the entire game. Elmer Thomas is coming as a wide receiver. Remember, as the pitch out goes over there, the Atkins and the tackle is made by Johnny Holland. Remember the wide receivers, Adamson and Moore and Thomas and Jacobs, and perhaps later on Marquise Pleasant will all alternate bringing in the plays. Second down and seven to go from midfield. SMU, we saw them against Texas Christian, 56 to 21. Then they came the Copper against Arizona and Baylor. Reggie DuPont has come back into the ballgame, number 21. And that goes Kobe Morrison carrying and stacked up. Stacked up well by Todd Howard, number 73. The linebacker on that side and Rod Sadler, number 99. <laughs> See, that's just a field play. They they ride the fullback who happens to be Morrison in that play there. And if Kane feels that the hole is there, the fullback can go ahead and take it. But there was no opening at all. If he picked up a half a yard, he picked up a lot. Jacobs goes wide to the right. Albert Thomas comes to the left on third down and six. Ball just over in Aggie territory at the 49. On King. Look out! He gets away for a moment and is then thrown back to the original line of scrimmage. Domingo Bryant on a strong safety blitz. Caused King to run up, and he was put down. It's fourth down. Domingo Bryant is going to come in. You see him cheat. He cheats up. He's the safety man. And King, this is his blind side. Number two is King. There's no way he can see him. Holland was also there. Domingo Bryant knocked him off. And again, Dodge Carter in for a very quick kick. Because they don't waste much time, and that's a good kick because that's inside the 20-yard line. Down to the 15-yard line. We've got 8.32 to go with first quarter in Rainy College Station. No score. If Madam Butterfly would have had an 86 Colt four-door sedan with optional turbo power, Lieutenant Pinkerton would never have gotten away. Important for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. Coke, it's all the Japanese you need to know. We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence. Become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Next Saturday, Florida State takes on South Carolina in our Top 10 CFA exclusive. No one has better college football. Live Saturday. Now, this young man, oh, he did turn around for us. Now, give us a big smile. <laughs> He listens to the right network. He's got to grow into that hat. <laughs> First down from the 15 for the Aggies. Murray is the quarterback. Tony and Woodside the setback. And this is Keith Woodside looking for running room. And has some. And gets all the way up to the 24-yard line before Case and company knock him out of bounds. Jim, we talk so much about the two inside linebackers from SMU, Case 44 and Briggs 54. Now watch him going down the line. You see Case, there comes Ball again. He almost makes the tackle. That is Briggs, number 54, that makes the tackle. Mark the ball up to 24. Second down and a long yard to go. No score, first quarter. That's Tony, and I thought, oh, lost the football again. And I believe, again, it is Murray down there that's got it, or is it SMU that's got it? Murray looked like he had it, but then it, it didn't hit. Well, yeah, he pulled it out. He, get, he gets it. He gets it. Yeah, he gets it. Don't need to fight, Kevin. You got it. Tell you what, little Jeff Nelson got one, and then Kevin Murray. That's a third fumble by an Aggie. Okay, here comes Kit Case. He goes back to the inside. He's the man that pulls the ball out. The other man hitting in there was Jerry Ball, number 34. That seems like there's three guys that we call all the time. Case, Briggs, and Ball. Second fumble by the Aggies that they have recovered for a first down. The ball is at the 31-yard line. They're going to put those plays in. I don't think so. <laughs> little confusion here, apparently. But now that is Jeff Nelson, the conference's leading wide receiver, setting up to the right. And here's Murray. 
He chased and throwing, and that ball is over the head of the intended receiver. Gary Ball was bothering him. Jim. Nelson and Walker were both deep. Now watch Jerry Ball, and he just gets rid of the center, then the guard picks him up. Watch this. He takes Fontenot. He's gone. He's already by Fontenot. That's, let's go. While he is, is after him now, he's holding him, and then watch who's in the face of Murray. Jerry Ball. Now, Fontenot was looking for somebody to block. Emma has a flag down, and it's against the Aggies. Am I right that Fontenot has the responsibility of Jerry Ball? If, he, if he's looking for someone to block, you ought to look right in front of him, because <laughs> number 34 is sitting in his face. But, I, you know, it depends on what kind of a deal that the offensive line has. He may be... His, his well, the main man he's supposed to block, Jim, may be the linebacker, the inside linebacker, which would be Case in that, in, or, or Briggs in that, in that situation. But the guard never got there either, because ball was so fast. Remember, Matt Wilson, the starting center, is out of there. Lost it down on that play, second down 15 from the 26. <laughs> Now, did he take too much time? Doug Williams raise up, perhaps at right tackle. If he is, he's anticipating the rush of Joe Phillips, the big 290-pound senior over there. Well, there's another five yards. No loss of down on this. It'll be second down and 20. Jackie Sherrill has a very young ball club, but make no mistake, Dupart is a senior, and King is a senior, but that's a very young SMU team also. Ball at the 21. Second down, 20. And when they take Dupart out, they have after. <laughs> he was not a senior. That's right. That's scary. He's a junior. Murray. Under pressure. Throws short. That's his running back, Keith Woodside. He gets to the 25. It is third down and still about 16 yards to go. Neither team has had an offensive threat yet. There have been fumbles and several punts. We're going to see Woodside come out now. The man that's covering him is Kit Case, number 44. He checks, makes sure there's no run, then he gets right in on the play. He's going to get help from Reese, number four, that comes in right there at the end. But he didn't need it. He didn't need it. And Hummel was there, number 45. Third right down play, or else Todd Chance will have to kick the ball away. Oh, good block there to help Murray. Now Murray gets the ball away, but away from the intended receiver, Jeff Nelson, across the way. And he was covered over there by Derek Reed. And now Todd Chance comes on for his first punt. Last week, for the first time, he had one blocked, but he also kicked one 80 yards. As you said, great block, Jim. Here's the man that makes it. It's Woodside. Watch this. He sees his quarterback in trouble. He peels back to the inside, gives him a little help. Don Tremendo had the one blocked, as we said, and also reeled off the second longest in Texas Aggie history, an 80-yarder last week against Rice. There's Livingston, the deep man. No, the rush is not on, and that is a bad punt there. That goes out of bounds. And will be marked in Aggie territory at the 47-yard line. 6.33 to go, first quarter. There is no score. All of the girls get mumps because there is no homecoming in Aggie land, so every game is homecoming. Hello out there. Listen, how would you like to save some money and get something I'm absolutely sure you can use and enjoy right now, right where you are? It's TV Guide, America's favorite television magazine, and here's the story. You call this toll-free number and take advantage of the special TV offer, and you get 30 weeks of TV Guide home delivered, and you get three months to pay, and you get the lowest price going, and that's a promise. Yes, right now, call 800-445-4500 for 30 weeks of TV Guide at the lowest price going. 30 weeks of TV Guide in your mailbox for pennies a day. And you can pay in three easy monthly installments of just $5.75 each. 800-445-4500. Send no money, but call today. 800-445-4500. TV Guide pays for the call. Call now. You'll be glad you did. Kennington, Montgomery, Johnson, Mounts, and Morris are all in there now in the offensive line for SMU. They are the second. Now we understand that Clemston is in and Kennington is not, but that's almost the entire second line. They like to substitute bylines, and as Paul has pointed out, when you put in the second line there, you put in a bigger offensive line. 
not a smaller. So don't feel sorry for Don King and company. First down, scoreless first quarter. But they're in Aggie territory, SMU, and there's King going across the way and taking the ball and immediately taking the seat as Ron Morris. After a pickup of about four yards. Jim Darrell lost in the, the left corner, and, and it looks to me like on first down situations, Texas A&M, they're going into a basic man-to-man -man coverage on the outside at least. They're zoning up in the middle. When, you're, when you have that, you put Ron Morris out there on Austin, that five-yard pass is there all day. Elmer Thomas checks in with the play. Marquise Pleasant, who did not play last week, has not yet played here. They give the ball off to Hashaway, the up back, and Hashaway gets to the 40-yard line, where it'll be third down and two to go. And that is Barry Kelm again in on the tackle, number 65. All right, let's go to the right side of this offensive line. This is the second unit. Actually, they're all, all on the first team. Here they go. They're blocking down. Johnson, the center, blocks down. Mounts the guard, pulls into the inside. He really doesn't block anyone, and Hashaway gets picked up downfield by Kelm. Larry Kelm having an outstanding night. Junior out of Corpus Christi. Third and short, whistles blow. Got to have movement in the offensive line. Got to be. There's nobody in the Aggies moved that I saw. Instead of third and two, it's going to be third and seven. Dead ball foul. Illegal motion in the line. They'll move it back five yards. 527 to go here. A reminder that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern time, we go swing back into the National Hockey League. The Kings of Los Angeles play the Flyers at Philadelphia. 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific time. That's tomorrow on ESPN. Third and seven. On the Aggie 45. Kings still with the football, and a pressure gets the ball away, and unable to hold on to it is Reggie Dupont. Dupont normally has good hands. The ball was a little underthrown, and Reggie couldn't reach back and get it. Jim, this was the screen pass to Dupont. Now watch, he'll check up inside, lets the defenders go by him, but King did not have enough time. But this ball hits Dupont in the hands. He's starting to run before he has the football. Sammy O'Brien was bearing down on him. Now Dodge Carter, the A&M man who transferred to SMU back for his third punt of the night. This time they take a little bit longer in setting up. Jimmy Hawkins, the deep man. Carter angling for the sidelines, hoping to get it. But that's not going anywhere but into the end zone. will come out of the 20-yard line. 5.05 to go. First quarter still no score. And there's a flag down in the end zone. That's just the ball going in the end zone, Jim. There are a couple of them thrown down there. I guess they got nothing else to throw. No beanbags, so they threw down their flags. Come on, ESPN, a special. Bring back the cup, the America's Cup that we lost. Sunday at 10 o'clock Eastern time. $100 billion. A bunch of folks of six American syndicates are paying, trying to come up with the kind of keel and the kind of sails and the kind of sailors to bring that back from Australia. In February of 87, they'll be down around Fremantle outside of Perth on the Swan River and in the Indian Ocean. And ESPN will cover it from start to finish. First down, the Aggies. Kevin Murray, the quarterback, still with the football. He's around, has the man over there, may be intercepted, but is not. Intended for Nelson, and that was Jones over there. He has two interceptions already this year. Hey, I like being here in Aggie Land, but as we look down and everybody in front of us, as you watch Jones, stands up, we can't see. That's right. <laughs> here comes Jones. Now, watch this. He makes a great play on the ball. Nelson takes the play to the inside, Jim. is a little bit too long getting his out move, and by that time, Jones is there to make the play. Besides that, Murray looked at him the entire time. That doesn't second, help. Second down and 10. Very short drop this time with time. Puts it up right across the line of scrimmage, and Keith Woodside cannot hold on to the ball. Now, take a look. You can see where we are from our end zone. Well, see these folks right here? When it gets exciting, they all stand up, and so Paul and I have to go up like this also. <laughs> but a small price to say, uh, pay to see a good ball game here in College Station. As we said, we'll be back Thanksgiving night, Texas and Texas A&M. They'll burn that big bonfire the night before that lasts for about four weeks. They always do it starting the night before the Texas game. Third down and ten to go. The Aggies, Nelson, the man in motion, and Murray back for the third time to throw and look out. Case is the blitzing linebacker and throws him back to about the nine-yard line. Jim, they had two people blitzing, the two inside linebackers. T.D. Briggs is the first guy. He just takes the blocker, and when that happens, see T.D. Briggs come in, the watch. The guard picks him up and the center also. That frees Case. He does his job, Case does his job, and they work together 
get a sack. Now Todd Schantz must do his job. He got a poor punt the first time. The rush is not on. And that is a fair punt for the line driver taken by Andrew Livingston. And Livingston again will give the ball to SMU in Aggie territory at the 47-yard line. No score here at Collins Station. 4-14 left. Texas A&M, this is what we talked about in the Southwest Conference. They're number one in total offense, and SMU is number two, and neither team is looking like they belong there at this moment. But the field is slippery and the ball is wet. You know, we talked about two things. One, the overpowering offensive line. There's Tony Marshall, old T-Bone. Now look where he is. <laughs> Don't think he's not getting wet and cold up there. That is Atkins, and the man down at the bottom looked to be Terrence Mann, number 92, in a defensive end. All right, Jim, what I was talking about, two things. We have the big offensive line of SMU. But we also have the smaller, quicker line of Texas A&M. And that time, it looked like the hole was there and the hole closed. This team, at initial contact, they're going to get beaten. But they're going to be able to make that adjustment and make that move to the inside. That was 82 Jay Muller, not 92 Terrence Mann, who made that last tackle. Second down, seven to go from the 43-yard line. They just keep coming, and now Kobe Morrison gets down about the 40-yard line. It'll be third down in about two. There's Muller, 82, getting up, and the man at the bottom there. Number 65, Larry Kell, number 90, Samuel Bryan. I just thought that SMU would throw the ball a little bit more, especially on first down. It, you know, they have two runners that gain over 200 yards per game, Jim, but you, when you're playing one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, go ahead and throw the ball out there. That's wide open right now. Third and three. Let's see if they do it. No, they're going to hand the ball to a running back, and I think he's got it. I think DuPont's got it. Holding on is Larry Kelm, but I think DuPont has it. Jim, they're going to mark that ball at the 38-yard line, and he has to get they almost do to that. the 37. He didn't get it. DuPont bounced a little bit. They're going to mark the ball where he first hit. He's going to be a half a yard to a yard short. Here comes DuPont to the outside. Morrison is blocking inside. He gets hit there by Roper, number 83. But you saw that bounce. They're not going to give him the bounce. It's back where he hit first time, and I think he's going to be short. What do you think this early in the ball game? Bobby Collins has great confidence in his running game. If it's fourth down, does he go way out here? I he, would. He's been able to contain the Aggies thus far. And he's got that far to go. And I don't see any putters peeling out onto the field. Not when you've got those big offensive lines, plural. And here they come out, they're going to run for it. Or they're going to throw, but they're going to go for it. They're going to run for it. Fourth down. Ball at the 43-yard line, just in that. If they get near the 42, they've got the first down. Second man through Dupart, and he's got it. Dupart is inside the 35-yard line, and that's more than enough for the first down. And if Dupart breaks one tackle, Jim, they had all 11 men up on the line of scrimmage. If he breaks one tackle here, he's going to go to the left of the screen. Take a look here. If he breaks this one tackle there, he's not going to break it because Darrell Austin is, is there to make the tackle. If, he, if he'd have broken that one, it would have been gone. Scoreless, but the Mustangs are trying to do something about that. First down inside the 35. And that is Kobe Morrison getting a yard or so, and that is about all. And again, Jay Muller, number 82, is there, and there's a flag on the play. Downfield, and that would seem to indicate it's going to be against the Aggies. Now, this happens after the play. It's Austin is downfield, is the cover man, and it's on Ron Morse, number 23, but... Austin was the one that hit him when he was laying on the ground. And I believe it's 23 Morris. All right, here comes Morris off the line of scrimmage. Now he's going to throw a block on Austin downfield. They're, they're a little chicken fighting here. But that's, that's now what happens on the way up. Oh, whoops. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, look, who, look who's right there. How about a knee in your face? That takes it inside the 20. We told you Joe Thomas is the referee. Marvin Gunberg is the umpire. 
Linesman is Don Brown. The line judge is Bob Baker. Ron Underwood is the field judge. Side judge is Lloyd Dale and Phil Luckett is the back judge. First down, biggest threat of the night. SMU's got it at the 19. And that is Dupont, and that's a fine play from in the backfield by John Roper, the outside linebacker who looped around number 83. Jim, if the guard that was pulling would have blocked Roper, it'd still be running with the football. It would have been a touchdown. But he did not block Roper. Roper got back to the inside and made the play. Alex Morris, who is listed as number 30, is coming to the ball game for the Aggies ball, but this is a defensive change. And he's listed as a running back. But number 30 has definitely come in for the Aggies. We'll check that out. Second down of about nine. Here's King going over here and has his man Morris, and Morris is put down. But it's a first down, first and goal to go at the five-yard line. Flowers was the cornerback on that side who knocked him off his feet. Jim, this is strictly a timing play because King throws this ball before Morris made the move. What? You could see the Flowers was looking in the backfield. Morris gets the ball. Flowers comes up and makes the play. They are down at the five-yard line, but that was just a timing pattern to the outside. Well, there's play one-on-one -on -one coverage out there, and they're playing off that far. Go for it. No score, last minute, 10 seconds of the first quarter, but SMU's got first and goal to go. Showing us a power eye, and Reggie Dupont looking for touchdown number 14 on the year, and has it. Dupont has his 14th touchdown. And just get him to the outside, Reggie Dupont. Watch, they will seal everything of Texas A&M's defense to the inside. And once that happens, here comes Dupont. Johnny Holland, the linebacker, gets caught up inside. Just no way to run him down. He's got touchdown. That puts him ahead of Bo Jackson. As on to add the extra point is Brandy Brownlee, and it is 7-0. All right, Jim, we'll take a look at it again. This play was designed to go right off tackle. But Dupart sees that everything is blocked to the inside. So once he does that, Morrison, number 47, gets a good block. He was there. No one would have touched him anyway. He just wanted to make sure he got the touchdown. Dupart, on your left there. Don King, the quarterback on your right. They made things happen. King completed that pass, remember, to Ron Morris. Down to make it first and goal to go before Dupart took it in. Again, we'll see the good blocking. Hashaway gets a great block on the inside. He's the man that blocked Holland inside. But once Dupart has that running room, they're not going to catch him. He's some back in these six feet tall, good size, 201. A senior tailback out of New Orleans. Brownlee will kick the ball off. And you do know that the Aggies have crossed the 50-yard line but one time and then fumbled the ball away and Kit Case recovered that fumble. But they recovered a couple of their own fumbles, meaning the Aggies have already fumbled three times. And this is a fumble-type ball here, but it is picked up by Hawkins. And look at this wedge bust, and he gets passed and is all the way out to the 37-yard line, a step away from going all the way. Jim, I don't know if that's uh, Ila Garza, number 38, that makes the, makes the tackle on this play. But when you see the move that makes Hawkins, with, they're going down special teams guys. I mean, they're, they're just a little stranger than most people. You should know you're a captain of the special teams <laughs> in the play. Right. That's right. They mark the ball back at the 35-yard line. Now the Aggies trail 7-0 in the closing one minute of the first quarter. Tony and Woodside are the backs. That is Nelson, the man in motion. And now check that because that's Johnson in there. Harry Johnson. And he carries the ball and gets across the 40-yard line before T.D. Briggs knocks him out. Johnson, a freshman out of Pasadena, California. 47 yards they went. Staying on the ground most of the time with but one pass up to Morris at the five before Dupart took it in on the five-yard run. In order for Texas A&M to, to win this football game, Jim, they're going to have to put the ball in the air, but the problem that they're going to have is slowing down ball, case, and breaks. Well, that's the fear they have. That's the fear that's a very real one. Johnson, look at this. 
Johnson is hit, and guess by whom? You just mentioned his name, Jerry Ball, a junior out of Beaumont. He just, Jimmy, he gets himself in such great position, Jerry Ball does. I mean, he, he plays the feel of the block. Well, they have run out of time in the first quarter. There's no score. It'll be third and short when we come back, but the first quarter is won by SMU. They lead by seven points. Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey Gilly. Folks, if you have a pickup because you need a pickup, I've got some great news for you. Those days of loading by lifting are over, thanks to an exciting new product called VersaRound. Now, with one of these on your truck, you can push, pull, ride, or drive just about anything that'll fit right up in the bed. Now, is that the great news or what? Kiss that lifting goodbye. At UPS, it was never our intention to become a tourist attraction. But every year, scores of efficiency-minded Japanese businessmen show up and ask to tour our facilities. You see, UPS is so efficient, we can deliver next day air usually for half what other companies charge. Which is why so many Japanese find UPS the most rewarding package tour anywhere. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Recently, a young father heard some unexpected news. A college education may cost $140,000. He called Merrill Lynch. Does the plan you set up cover me? I'll look into it. Fixed income portion cover to college. And get me investor support in New York. Ron, I need research opinions on these stocks. Well, the analyst is checking that company. You've gotten sales and revenues up. Good. This is what we needed. Don't change a thing. More resources, better solutions. Merrill Lynch people a breed apart. Some copier companies make televisions. Meta doesn't. Some make clock radios. Meta wouldn't hear of it. You see, we believe the best way to make better copiers is to make nothing but copiers. A philosophy that's helped me to create some of the most remarkable copiers anywhere. After all, we didn't get to be the fastest growing copier company by making cameras. Meta, all we make are great copiers. Call 1-800-ABC-META. Third down and two, Texas Aggies on their 43-yard line. And that's a new quarterback in this stunt, and he kicks the ball out to Tony, and Tony's got the first down. Craig Stump, a starter earlier in the year, has come on and kicks the ball out to Anthony Tony, and he's got the first down. They throw it to Anthony Tony, but Johnson, who's the fullback, number 21, gets to the outside, and he's going to get a piece of Jones, number one, on, on the left cornerback, and he doesn't block him down, but he just gets enough of him. You see him at the top of the screen to get him to the outside, and once that happens, here comes Tony. All on the 41-yard line. The Aggies fail 7-0. And again, Stump in there, handing the ball off, and not much there for Tony, who carried the ball. And you can see the man getting up. He's number 80, and that is Wade Johnson, the defensive end. Second down seven from inside the 40-yard line. There's a young Aggie. and stumped back for one of his rare passes of this year. It is out there and complete to Shea Walker, and Walker is in deep trouble. It'll be third down and about three from the 34-yard line. Shea Walker would like to get that pass it's a little bit further downfield, Jim. They threw that pass to Shea, and four guys hit him. I mean, they kept spinning off him. He kept turning, but eventually you're going to get nailed. What you hear in the background, and now it is over, we think, the typical Aggie cheer and the swaying back and forth which prompted us to jump to our feet because everybody else was. Aggies are doing all right. They're down by seven, but another big third down play. Remember, Murray was replaced, and we'll check to see whether or not Murray just was not moving the team, and that's why they call on this man, who's called timeout. Craig Stump calls timeout. Well, we'll take timeout. 13.37 to go in the first half. SMU on the DuPont touchdown, up by seven. There's a style in your life No one could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you are Where you're going you've always known it Where you're going it's make the law Where you're going it's exciting
exceptionally smooth Niccolo. Where you going, it's Niccolo! For all those confrontations with the unpredictable, BMW introduces the ultimate defense, the 535i. With an amazingly agile suspension, a computer-controlled engine that constantly adjusts to changing driving conditions, and an ingenious anti-lock braking system. The 535i, it lets those who take driving seriously peacefully coexist with those who don't. CFA Saturday Night on ESPN is brought to you by Exceptionally Smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. By BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. Third down and two, the ball at the 33-yard line. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire, Rainey in College Station, Texas. SMU up by seven, early in the second quarter. Craig Stump has replaced Kevin Murray at quarterback. And this is Stump on third and short, looking to throw, and has his man out there. That is Woodside, but a flag is down. As Woodside goes out, could be holding. Stump puts the spot it back at the 40-yard line. So instead of a first down at the 14, hold everything. They're moving back, and Stump hasn't moved one bit since he saw that flag go down right in front of him. It's going to be holding on Texas A&M because they're not very happy, and it may be they're holding. I don't know if it was Fontenot, the center, not holding on ball who is the nose tackle, and that's the only way they've been able to even try to slow him down. Matt Wilson, remember, the center went out injured, and Fontenot, a redshirt freshman, has been playing at center, trying to handle Jerry Ball, and Kevin Murray's been replaced by Craig Stump. Okay, now we got Wilson's back, back in the in. game. All right, now, let's see if this is where the hold is. Yeah, well, oh, how about yeah. your arms wrapped around him? That's not a dance. I got you. <laughs> that's a takedown. Can't argue about that. Third down from the 43, but you're going to have to do at least that much to contain Jerry Ball. They're worried about Ball and also Phillips, thinking that Williams can do a job on Phillips, but they don't know who can stop Jerry Ball because seldom has Jerry Ball stopped. Third and 12. Here's Stump. Looking to throw, and uh-oh, the man, intended receiver, fell down. And the intended receiver, I believe, was Rod Harris, the freshman out of Dallas, Texas, and it is fourth down. Wouldn't have made any difference anyway, Jim, because the ball was thrown out of bounds. He had no chance to get to it anyhow. Todd Chomps has not been putting on a punting exhibition tonight, and this is a man averaging nearly 46 yards per kick. Standing his own 43-yard line, Andrew Livingston is standing at his 10. Wants to pooch this a little bit, and he's going to get the job done. Going to get the job done. They keep it from going into the end zone, stopping it at the one-yard line, 13, 16 to go, second quarter, and SMU leads by seven, but in deep trouble. We're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Four-cylinder engines have changed. They work harder than ever. Even when they're just idle. But watch this. 7,500 miles at top speed in a four-cylinder engine, new Valvoline four-guard motor oil showed no significant breakdown. None. New Valvoline four-guard. It helps your four-cylinder engine keep up the hard work. Sunday, the LA Kings face Philadelphia's Flyers in our live NHL matchup. The Flyers are at the top of the Patrick Division with playoff goals in mind. The improving Kings will have to be tough to beat the league's best goalie. It's more of the NHL's best, live Sunday, only on ESPN. Kevin Murray has rib problems, but he will return. As we went away, there's a late flag, and they're marking off 15 yards. Joe Thomas. Well, you figure it out. Well, we heard it while we were in commercial, but they said it was a flag against... Texas A&M 
and it'll be the ball right there at the one and a half yard line, first down and 11. Now that happens to be first down and 10. I don't care how they moved it back to the 16. Uh, we don't know, but the Aggies are penalized. And that moves SMU somewhat out of the trouble. 15 yard penalty. King hands off there and Dupont does not get too much. That's Atkins, not Dupont. That doesn't surprise anybody anything there, does it? Except for the turnover. Well, I'd tell you what surprises me. So a little yardage here, the number one and two offensive teams in the Southwest Conference. And the top for a quarter, 72 yards. But uh, Higgs a at least they're balanced in there. But they're trading by seven, second down, and eight to go. The ball on the 18-yard line. Don King still has the football rolling up and throwing on the far sideline, and it is incomplete over there, intended for Ron Morris. Nobody near Morris, but he dropped the football. Well, King didn't set himself up. Here's Murray coming in now. They, they did tape up his side, and he's going to start throwing the ball. He wants someone to play catch with him. But what happened that time when King rolled out, Jim, he had two choices. He could have run the football, but what he didn't do is get himself set and square up down the field so he can throw the ball out there to Morris, because Morris was, as you said, wide open. 7-0 SMU, third down SMU. They've got eight to go. Don King, first man through Kobe Morrison. He's picked up at the line of scrimmage. It's fourth down and long. And now... Dodge Carter will have to kick the ball away, and the fans again come to their feet. Aggies have been playing good defense. What they need is some offense. Tony Thompson goes deep with Jimmy Hawkins. As Carter kicks the ball away, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 39-yard line. 39-yard line, good field position for the Aggies, who trail 7-0. Now, next week, Paul and I'll be down in Tallahassee, Florida. Looking forward to that. Florida State probably still licking its wounds as Miami won its seventh in a row today in the fourth quarter to come back. And South Carolina probably still shell-shocked. They had a lead late in the game, only to have North Carolina State come back. But two Florida independents, and Paul and I'll be in Tallahassee at 7.30 next Saturday night to bring those to you. And don't kid yourself, Florida State is riding high in its attempts to get a good bowl attempt, a bid. Well, Stump has come back in at quarterback. Murray was throwing on the sidelines, but Craig Stump, the sophomore, is back there, sending Shea Walker out wide to the right. That is Nelson in motion. And this is Stump. He can run. This is his forte right there. And he gets a yard or so. Not much of a forte there. Like a fork. Mark Vinson came up and helped put him down. Well, T.D. Briggs is in there, too. Uh, this is not a good decision for Stump coming down the line of scrimmage. Now watch, because the play takes so long. Now the defense, they're coming up. They're running along the line of scrimmage. They're just sitting there waiting. Dozier's there, number 99. But you see Vincent, number 15, is the man that makes the hit. Pick second down, excuse me, second down and seven to go from the 43-yard line. I'd like to see one of these teams throw their tight end. Nelson is a leading receiver in the Southwest Conference, but he hasn't thrown a ball tonight. He covered a bump ball tonight. There's Stump back to throw, and he's got the time. Delivers the football, and in a crowd, it is caught by Shea Walker. First down inside the 45. Jim. You know, unless you're down there in the middle of all that, you just can't appreciate the great reception by Shea Walker because he was in the middle of three defensive players from SMU and came down with the football. Not only was he was he covered, but once he had the ball in his hands and the, and the ball was away from his body, he got hit again. 5'11", 186 to take that pounding. First down, Stump dropping straight back again. And down he goes, and guess who? You'll see number 34 get up. His name is Jerry Ball. And that is a sack from the 40-yard line all the way back to about the 49. If you're not going to block him, at least when he goes by, you holler for him to slow down a little bit because you're going to get your quarterback killed. He goes by the center, number one. He goes by the center, Wilson. And Fontenot was playing the guard. He couldn't block him either. And Jerry Ball sacks. Well, they Stump. put him down at the 47-yard line. Well, that is his fifth sack. Ball goes out. As they expect uh, him to throw, and in comes Robert McDade, a redshirt freshman. He's got some speed, too. It weighs 230. Number 70, here's Stump. Now delivers the ball, and that is intercepted. 
Went right to the defensive man back there. It looked like Frankie Thomas, number 29, and that's who it is. Flag goes down on the play, I believe, at the 30-yard line. Let's check it. No. They're still discussing things down there. But that was not a good throw by Craig Stump at all. No, he did not read the defense, and he sure sure did not read the free safety. Look at Frankie this. Thomas. Personal foul against the Aggies also after Thomas caught the ball. And here comes SMU leading by seven with 15 more yards. That's the second 15-yard penalty in the last two minutes of play against the Aggies. Well, you're absolutely right. First of all, first down. Okay, the man that's going to make the tackle afterwards is Walker, but Frankie Thomas is just playing free safety and doing what the free safety does. It's center field, Jim. He's right there. I don't know who he's throwing the ball to. Nelson was there. Walker was there. Walker and Nelson make the tackle, but there is the spearing by number 25, Anthony Tony. First down from the 45-yard line. They'll take the Dupont. King's still with the football. And he can run the ball. And is put down by Todd Howard with help from Larry Kell. But that's a gain of about six yards to the 49-yard line of the Aggies. Jim, I got to believe after the, in the first quarter that every time the King rolled to the outside, there was only one defensive man there. And with his speed and quickness, he can get that he get by the, the outside linebacker. I think what the bench has told him is said, hey, look, it, when you get to the outside like that, you have a blocker out in front of you. You go ahead and go. We are live from College Station, CFA, Saturday night on ESPN, SMU 7, Texas A&M nothing, second quarter, and there's a fake pitch out, and then the handoff and Kobe Morrison, and Howard is holding on again, and again Kelm is there, that's a combination, and you can see Sadler also getting up. Third down, there's the SMU bench, lost to Arizona big, 28-6, and then to Baylor, 21-14. Now they're saying the pressure's off to have... <laughs> That's a way of putting it, to have an undefeated season after you've lost two in a row. But there was great pressure, they're on probation, and so many people say that you're looking at the best group of college talent on one team this year. And they're taking into consideration the depth. And there is the first down. Dupont gets it, but consideration of the depth that we're talking about SMU but what about the ball club ball that has not lost yet and that's Florida and Galen Hall the coach has never lost a game since he took over midseason last year at Florida well they're one and one tie okay here comes Dupart he's just following his offensive backs but he sees that they get jammed up in the inside on the outside so he cuts it back right over the center over Edson and he picks up the first down he actually picked up almost two yards on the play at the 39 yard line of the Aggies on King Throws it downfield. He's got a man there, and Morrison can't That's get to it. Back ball. there with him is number 15, James Flowers. And no, there are no flags on the play. Did it look like Morris tripped? Yes. Because it looked like he was yes. he was running out running the ball, and he had a shot at it, and then all of a sudden he went down. Flowers was with him. Even if he does trip with his feet, it's it's incidental contact. But here goes Morris downfield. Now, when he makes his break, he I leaves Flowers, and he's breaking to the outside. He's going for the ball. I thought he tripped over his own feet. No, he just made a one. Dive for the penalty call. Second down and ten. Go a little too early. Dang, and that's a handoff to Dupont. Right, that's Howard after him. He can't get him. Holland after him. And over there is Flowers along with Bryant to put him down. Down it'll third down as they carry Dupont to the sidelines. They do string his play out. This is supposed to be some sort of a delayed draw. Right here, you see Dupart waiting on the draw play. He looks through the middle, there's nothing there. And then you're gonna see 73 Howard. He's chasing the outside. Johnny Holland, you're not gonna outrun him. You're not gonna outrun Flowers and Bryant, not when they have the angle. Dupart has a five-yard touchdown pass, but that's part of the 19 total yards he's had on seven carries. Third down and 10 to go, SMU, leading by seven. King goes, and the catch is made by Jacobs, and Jacobs has the first down inside the 30-yard line. Jeffrey Jacobs makes only his second catch of the year, taking over as he did last week against Texas for Marquise Pleasant, who was out injured. Jim, Darrell Austin is the man that's going to come up and make the play. They had a blitz on that time, and Austin is playing one-on-one -on, -one on Jacobs, number 14. Austin will be number one. Now, what happens is when Austin sees the hookup, here he comes. If you can't make the interception, you must make the tackle. He does not make the tackle on Jacobs. Here comes Holland. But that's after Jacobs picked up another five yards. From the 29-yard line, 
Bobby Collins watching his team up by a touchdown, trying to add another. And they've stymied the Aggies tonight. This is Atkins running the football. A flag is down as Mary Kell makes the tackle. Flag is down, and this may be holding against the Mustangs of SMU. Joe Thomas again to sort things out. Referee holding against SMU. Jim, Jim you, you do a lot of delay things against a bigger defensive football team, but when you have a team like Texas A&M, they're smaller and quicker. Those delay plays don't work as effectively because you give those littler guys enough time to get by the bigger man. So what you want to do is basically run at them. The little extra cheer or boo there, as you tell, I'll let you call this first ball. Well, number 68, McKinney, is that the man that they're calling? You see him right in the center of the screen, and I, I'm not sure. That's on O'Brien. The little extra boo was that the Joe Thomas only stepped off five yards to begin with, and it is, of course, a 10-yard penalty, and he changed that and corrected it. Now here's King looking, and that's a good play. Down at the 40-yard line, Todd Howard. Donnie Holland over there, but Howard is a man who slowed him up. Ball at the 40-yard line. Morrison pulled out as, as the fullback to block on the outside. He didn't complete his block, and that's what got King in trouble. And Todd Howard is the man you got, really have to give credit for the play, even though Holland was in on, on the tackle. The mystery of number 30, Alex Morris, has been solved. He has been switched to defense, although listed as a running back. Second down and long, 21 yards to go. Morris is in there. They set up the screen, and the ball is overthrown. And Tennant for Ducart on the left side. And it's third and long. And King took quite a shot back near his own 40-yard line. And the man you were just talking about, Morris, was one of the people that was blitzing on that side, and he came in. What happened, they ran a, almost like a center screen to the halfback. The linemen were there, but what they had to do is they've got to slow down the defensive line one more count. It's, it's usually a one, two, three count, and then you can release, but they're just letting him pour in. 6-18 to go on this the first half, and it's third down and 21. SMU up by a touchdown. situation. They sent a strong safety blitz. blitz. The Bingo Bryant watch it at the bottom of your screen right there. Number six comes in and when he forces King to the inside, Todd Howard is there to make the tackle. It's good defense. And now Carter to kick the ball away. The line is going good. He's a 29-yard line. He's kicking from his own 40. And that ball is taken back there by Hawkins and he took it inside his 10-yard line and I don't, I'm not so sure that he likes that because it's first down at the 9. In Germany, the head of BMW's personnel department is an engineer. The director of corporate planning is an engineer. Even the chairman is an engineer. So it's not surprising that BMWs leave the factory with a very clear sense of priorities. And that's crucial. Because when you buy a car, what you're really buying is the company that built it. There's a style in your life No one could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you Where you're going, it's exceptionally smooth Niccolo. Where you're going, it's Niccolo. For college football, former Texas Tech receiver Dan Law. When I attended Texas Tech University on a football scholarship, I was married. So I worked part-time as a delivery boy for a local wholesale house. Today, I own the company. My biggest boost was the scholarship that provided the education to help me realize that anything in life is possible even for a delivery boy. College football. It's doing a lot of good. Kevin Moore returns as quarterback after having his ribs taped. 
Murray on a pitch out over here. And look at this run by Woodside. Keith Woodside has gotten them out of trouble. After Hawkins fielded the ball at the nine, Woodside carries it from the nine to the 29. A 20 yard pickup, first down, Texas Aggies. Wiley and Cheeks are on, on this on this left hand side, the right hand side of your screen. Now just watch out. There goes Cheeks. He goes through and he gets the linebacker. When Cheeks ends up getting the linebacker, it gives Woodside a chance to get upfield. That's De La Garza, number 38, is the inside linebacker for TD Briggs. Woodside picks up a first down and they're at the 29 or almost 30 yard line. But well, we have a we man a hurt over here, Paul. They're tending to in front of the Aggie bench. I'm uh, looking to see whether Woodside is out there or not, but see the folks. Now, looks as though, well, no, they're going back down, I thought, for a moment. And that kind of shadow in the lower part of your screen of the folks in front of us who stand up in front of us. Jim, they're going to call it a late hit here. We'll see Woodside. Tony gets an excellent block on the inside. They block out, they kick out well. Now, Woodside is it's setting up his blockers. This is going to occur at the end now. Here's the tackle. I don't see a late hit. No, I don't either. However, they did because they've taken the ball out to the 44-yard line. 5.31 to go. First down the Aggies. They trail by seven. And we're in the first half here at College Station. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. When Elliot took over as manager, the Southport office was considered exceptional, exceptionally sloppy and unproductive. So Elliot called in Team Xerox, who studied his documents and recommended a solution, including Xerox memory writers for perfect letters and the 1090 Marathon, the most productive copier in the world. Now the Southport office is exceptional for something else. dramatic turnaround of the year at the Southport office. These days, deciding what kind or color of paint to buy can be as difficult as finding a salesperson. But at True Value Hardware Stores, you'll find knowledgeable salespeople to assist you, plus quality True Test paint. With their modern custom color system, they can help you coordinate colors, and they attend True Test paint training seminars to keep informed on the latest paints and applications. So get quality True Test paint and helpful advice from the specialists at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Tonight in Charlottesville at a scoreless game between UVA and West Virginia. Virginia quarterback Don Mikowski rolls left and scores on a 16-yard run. And Virginia at home takes the lead 7-0. They attack in another score as Kevin Morgan scores from four yards out. The Cavaliers at home on top 14-0. Let's get back out of College Station and Jim Simpson. There's one of those Texas a and moms as we said, all of the dates here. Get the, oh, look at this young girl. She's got one, too. Never homecoming. Kevin Murray on first down. Has the time and is going down here and let's see if a flag is thrown. They say no. No flag intended for Tony Thompson, the freshman out of Houston, number 80. The hurt man was Frankie Thomas and he trotted off the field. And Derek Reed came back in and on that play was covering Tony Thompson down the sidelines. What they were upset about is that Reed had fallen down at the feet of Thompson and they thought that maybe he should be catching the football. Second down and 10 to go. On the 44 yard line. They pitch back. This is Woodside. He had a 20 yard run earlier and he's got a first down here. Keith Woodside. First down inside the 40 yard line. Woodside first to the left for 20 and then to the right for 16. Well, I told you before, you don't want to run up in the middle against these guys because ball is there. But when they get to the outside, look at Anthony Tony, number 25. You see T.D. Briggs is in there, but Anthony Tony gets a piece of him, knocks him down as he goes down. Woodside gets through. They're inside the 40. 7-0 SMU, the best drive for the Aggies. It started on their 9-yard line, remember. Now they're on the 39. Oops, not much there. It is there. Tony gets down to the 35, and I thought he's going to be stopped for no game, but he picks up four. Man at the bottom of the pile making the stop was Rudy Harmon, a freshman linebacker, number 56. Well, Joe Phillips, number 91, is the man that ended up stuffing the hole. And when Tony bounces out back out to the outside, he picked up four yards on the play. SMU cannot go to the Cotton Bowl, but a loss inflicted here by SMU on it. The Aggies would be a conference loss. Second down, here's Murray with the bad ribs running for the first down. And takes a shot there. 
Derek Reed, number 24, and number 44, Kit Case. Jim, I don't know if the man on the outside is number 80, Wade Johnson. I can't see here, but instead of taking, no, it wasn't Wade Johnson, excuse me. It was Harmon, the, out, the defensive end on the outside. He went to the pitch band and let, Har and let uh, Murray get away from it, and he took the ball inside the 30 to 27-yard line. Where it is, first down for the Aggies. Sending Tony Thompson wide to the right. Anthony Tony gained 30 yards on four carries. And we'll get a chance to add to that here. And gets about three yards inside the 25 to the 24. Check that that foot side. Tony Tony. Reed makes the stop. Derek Reed has been in the last three plays defensively. Defending or helping on the tackle. We don't know whether Mark Vincent, number 15, got hurt or not. Woodside has 47 yards, and I don't think DuPont has half that. But the night is young. Nelson to the right. On second down and seven. Inside the 25. Set up on this side, and oh, Murray almost caught his own pass. Batted up in the air as it was. Eichmann. But the man who caused all the trouble for him. Eichmann, a defensive end, junior, out of Alvin, Texas. Well, the rain apparently has gone away. We hope to good. Rain much of the day. 321. Now a flag is down, apparently, after the play, because I didn't see it on the play, Paul. No, it's down here, whether it's a, a holding penalty or what, because it, it's, it was thrown down by the 20-yard line out here by the sideline. Oh, oh, I'm call offside. Yeah, second down on a couple instead of third and long. I saw Murray after that ball was bad. Take a look at these penalties. Now, there's four for SMU and eight for Texas A&M. And remember, Jim, in the, in the Alabama game, how many penalties Texas A&M has. Huh. They might have been able to win the ball game. Now, here's Tony. Tony inside the 15. Tony down to the 11-yard line. Where it is first down. Aggies, a trail 7-0, 3.15 to go in the second quarter. The drive started on the 9. Jim, Anthony Tony's going to cut into the inside. T.D. Briggs, number 54, is going to overrun the play. You see him right there. He gets beyond the play to take on the blocker. Kid Case is there to help out on the tackle. But you can't overrun these guys or they're going to beat you to death. There's Woodside again. Woodside in tough yards. But he gets them with Rudy Harmon hanging on down at the bottom, number 56. Gets the ball down to the seven-yard line. They're just running power offense, but again, they're not going to the inside. They're going more to the outside. They get excellent blocking there. There's Harmon in on, on, on the play, and also Ball is on the bottom of the play. Now they can get a first down inside the two-yard line. Clock is running, 7-0 SMU. Aggies looking to tie it up before halftime. Just call an audible. Better get this play off. Oh, and right I think the right moved. tackle stood up. That Doug Williams may have been anticipating. All the audible. It was about three seconds to go, and the right tackle stood up. Jim, we're looking at nine penalties now for 85 yards for Texas A&M, and again. Way back at the beginning of the season when we did Texas A&M, Alabama, they had so many penalties in the ball game that every time they had a decent drive going, it slowed them down. Now here they had second down inside the 10-yard line, about five and a half yards to go for a first down. Doug Williams transferred out of the University of Kentucky where he played for two years. Matter of fact, he was back at Moeller, Jerry Fox School in Cincinnati. And he's been playing very well this year, but that's a mistake. Got a second down and 10. Ball back to cross the 11 yard line. Nelson in motion. There's Woodside, not much there. Everybody makes something out of it. It gets down to the six. Third down and four to go. Two people you don't think would miss a tackle TD Briggs and Jerry Ball. They were both there. TD Briggs has. When you said at the beginning when Woodside is going to be stopped, watch what happens. 54, he's sliding down. He's got himself in a great football position. Tries to arm tackle right here. Woodside goes right to him. Jerry Bobs misses right there. And then Woodside gets the ball back to the six. 
Third down, four to go for the first down and six for the touchdown. Nelson has been in motion all night to the right. Still out there. They can throw it out to him and do. And touchdown when the flag goes down. Nelson was there all night. Question, were they pushing on him or was another receiver pushing against one of the defensive men? There are two receivers out there and apparently the Aggies are going to come up on the short end again. Jim, I don't know whether... Uh, that, that thing came from the end zone and I didn't see... Well, there were two Offensive wide receivers. There were two wide receivers, one trailing Nelson. And I think it was not on Nelson, but the other man out there trailing him on the play. He was also covered. Let's see if we can figure out what it is as we take a look at it. Well, Murray throws a perfect pass here. I mean, he's rolling out. He sees Nelson wide open. Now, who is the other man? I don't see where... There's another man unless up it's there. there. Yeah, but he wasn't touching anyone. It had to happen in, in towards the middle of the field. Boy, that is a big, big loss of down there. Jim, now they're going to have to go for a field goal attempt and take away the touchdown. Jim, that's an also in this first half, 10 penalties for 100 yards. That is not only disgraceful, that is backbreaking. 33 yards out, Franklin will try the extra point. It is up and it is good. Field goal. 33 yards out. And it is 7-3. They come up with something... Although they thought they had a touchdown. A 38 yard field goal for They've got 153 to go. Thursday night, we've got another Thursday night college football special, San Jose State and Long Beach State. They'll start at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific time. And remember that, da that uh, Doug Gaynor is the quarterback of Long Beach State. And he finished third, believe it or not, behind Bosco and Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie. He is quite a thrower. Paul and I, on the other hand, on Saturday, one week from tonight, will be down in Tallahassee, Florida for Florida State and South Carolina, two Southern Independents, and Florida State on its way to bowl and South Carolina not having the kind of year it had last year. Lost a lot of the men, developing a new team under Drew Morrison. Chan went Frankie Thomas, the defensive free safety for SMU number 29, went out of the ball game. They just said he got hit in the head and got his bell rung. He'll be all right. Remember, the 12th man is in existence again now. The 12th man roster. They will kick it off. Scott Slater will kick it off. And then everybody out here is a non-scholarship player on the kickoff team. This is an honorary position. They get in there and they just sacrifice their bodies to be part of that 12th man legend. Only Jackie Shell has made it live. Livingston, the man in the middle. Last time. Slater kicked the ball out of the end zone. And this is taken by Morrison. There's one at missing, and that looked at them, throwed themselves around. That was Ronnie Glenn, the last you saw, number nine, a junior out of San Antonio. And again, they failed to get back to the 20-yard line. They've only been averaging about 13 yards per kick return against this 12-man team. I would like to be in their meetings because they've got to be a little stranger than fiction, these guys. I mean, here they come down the field. That's number four. That's, oh. that's Mud. Number four is, is the first man in Morrison. And then on the end of it, it's going to be Glenn, number nine, that falls on them. But they're a little strange. I tell you what. You said the man who forced him, Mud, he got his bell wrong as he did the forcing. He got hit right in the head. All right, it is 7-3, 147 to go. SMU back inside the own 20-yard line. Yep, man, and that is Morrison not going anywhere. Thus far, Dupart tapped off a short drive with a five-yard run to make it seven to nothing. That was in the first quarter. And then a drive that started on the nine-yard line culminated in the field goal by Franklin. And it is seven to three. King, there's SMU and King. They're going to have to loosen up this defense a little bit because they're so tight inside. They've got to throw the ball a few times, at least, at least once or twice downfield. 7-3, Hashaway is down as the fullback, and the ball is handed off to Dupard, and Dupard is tackled by O'Brien. Take the ball out to the 24-yard line. That is not enough for the first down. The Aggies call timeout with one minute and one second to go in the first half. Aggies trailing the Mustangs 7-3. 
not a company. But no company has more pride in what they do. Or more pride in how well they do it. We offer you a meaningful and fulfilling future. One that goes far beyond the ordinary. One that brings with it the respect and admiration of Americans everywhere. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Air Force. The Marines. The Army. The Navy. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. As there are people who can afford perfection, BMW will continue to pursue it. The BMW 635 CSI. Sunday, ESPN previews its live coverage of Yachting's greatest event. Will America bring back the cup? Take a look at the Challengers, Sunday. Newport has 23 yards on the night, Atkins 15, and a flag goes down. Before... Nobody moved. Five seconds went off the play clock. This time it is SMU that draws the penalty. Instead of third down and four, it'll be third down and nine. You know what they call this on? They had Jeffrey Jacobs that lined up his wide receiver, Jim, came out and lined up offside, and then he came back onside. The ball had not been snapped. That's encroachment by the offense. 100 yards against the Aggies, and they're still in the ball game, trailing by only four. Third and long. Could get the ball back if they stop them here. They stopped the running attack. There's King out. Look at and he goes down and left to kick the ball away. Todd Howard has been all over the field. And now Carter will have to kick it away, and there's an outside chance with 53 seconds to go. The Aggies can make something else happen. Remember at halftime, Bob Lee will be here. All of the scores today, Iowa got upset. Penn State barely won. Some big games today, plus a special report. You got a pass to play in Texas high schools. That's right, you got to pass your subjects or you can't play football or play in the band or basketball. And that is the subject of a halftime feature. Jim, and I think it's an excellent rule that should be observed all, the way over the, all over the country. Well, it is still causing some controversy here, even though no one really opposes it. They have other reasons. Dr. Jim, Carter, yes. you know, we're looking at 1985, and I can remember when I was in high school in 1955 that we had, I went to a Catholic high school in Youngstown, Ohio, Ursuline High School, and we had to go to, on every Friday, we had a game, we had to go to each one of our teachers and have them sign every single, before every single game, Jim, and if you didn't have one of them signed, you couldn't play. That was almost common practice 30 years ago. Now they're, now they're coming on to make them do it again, as you will hear at halftime, and a lot of the athletes think it's a good idea, as do the coaches. Oh, the ball thing. away. Oh, yeah. They needed that one there, and they got it. Whoops, going to get on the football. Where's he going to go? He's not quite sure, so he goes down. That's Thompson, a freshman back there. And that kick moves them all the way back to the 27-yard line where Kevin Murray will try to get something going in 42 seconds. No timeouts left. The Texas A&M took a timeout on that third down play. So they have no timeouts left. They have 42 seconds. And just to remind you, if, if they do get a first down, the clock stops to move the chains. But that's all. And 179 for A&M and SMU 90. Normally, DuPont or Atkins have that alone in one half. Jim, we're talking about the quick defense of Texas A&M. So far, they've held up very well against the, the overpowering offensive line. Lines. Four. Lines. Yeah, they use two of them. SMU does. Murray set out several series with rib injuries, but he's back in there now. Flag is down. Murray running. And wow, gets bumped out of bounds by Monty Gowan. And that's the first time I've called Monty's name tonight. And he's a good outside linebacker. Here we do have a flag. See what this one is, 34 seconds to go. Flag is on this side of the field. It's off the, offside, I think, against Texas A&M, or motion against Texas A&M. Whatever, it's going to be 100-plus yards against A&M. You cannot, you cannot play a good football team like SMU, even though you're in the game 7-3, to three, Jim. You can't play a good team like SMU and have this... The, uh, that many mistakes. You're talking about 11 penalties now for over 100 yards. 
And again, I want to repeat, we back in the Alabama game. We thought that they could win that Alabama game if it wasn't for the penalties. Instead, they lost a 23 to 10. Alabama's another team to roll today. Roll time. Bill Jackson injured. Well, Bob Lee will have all of that for you at halftime. First down and 15 to go. Ball back on the 22-yard line. Here's where the Aggies would like something to happen, but not do all the trolley. Keep the ball on the ground as they're doing right here. And Woodside is a running star of this game tonight. Make no mistake about it. He has just picked up about 12 yards and had earlier runs of 20 and 16. So I would imagine he is about outgaining Dupart and Atkins combined of SMU. There are 71 yards, and he is by far and away outgaining those two fine tailbacks of SMU. Jim, they're looking at, to the sidelines for a play, and there's 12 seconds, 11 and counting, and they have not picked up the first down. It's second down. They should have had plays called in the huddle. Yep. Here's the last play, barring a penalty. I guess he'll just air it out and hope something happens. He airs it out, and nothing happens. No flags go down. Time has run out. And DuPont's five-yard touchdown and Franklin's 38-yard field goal, the only scoring and the big story, the Aggie defense against SMU and the Aggies stopping themselves with 105 yards in penalties. This half is all over. It is 7-3 SMU. And remember, Bob Lee standing by with all the scores. Thank you very much, Jim. Well, that 7-3 score at halftime and about the balance now of college football, it is apparent. With that score up on the board, there's going to be a few changes in the top 20. Brand new number one team. And also in a few moments, we will take a look at the fact you've got a pass to subjects to play the game. Halftime brought to you by McDonald's. Good time for the great taste of McDonald's. You got the halftime? What just popped up? The new Sony Handycam. A video camera recorder that sees and hears every move. Just point and shoot and catch all the fun. It's so tiny it fits in one hand. The new Sony Handycam. Where will it pop up next? Absorbian Junior invites all hard-working Americans to rub it in. Rub it in, rub it in. Rub it in, rub it in. Absorbian Junior, the big rub it in solution for sore aching muscles. With deep penetrating action that gets under your skin fast for soothing relief. Put it on my back, my sack will really act. Absorbian Junior. Rub it in, rub it in. Boys, look at this dang picture. We got bad developing again, boys. My hat ain't even white. Well, I always said you was yellow. Oh, that's <laughs> funny coming from a green horn on a green horse. The horse is green. <laughs> Why, you are now, boys. Should have used that new Kodak color watch system. Could have had a great picture then. Try it again. Look for the color watch seal where you get your film developed for bright, vivid color prints time after time. And if you don't see that sign, keep on riding. You're looking at America's favorite work clothes. More men wear Dickies work sets than any other. Women, too. From pants to coveralls. From shirts to shoes to underwear. From gloves to socks to outerwear. Dickies makes everything in work clothes. But who says you have to work in them? and welcome back. We have a number of scores which we are keeping on top of for you this evening and I'm going to start with the college football scores of this evening. Some of the games in progress for you. Uh, some of the games we're watching right now East Carolina and Southern Mississippi we have East Carolina, we have East Carolina trailing Southern Mississippi right now 13 nothing. No, it's been updated to 20 to nothing there behind fourth quarter. Other scores, Tennessee Chattanooga was leading they still are. They were ahead 18-7. Now it's 25-7. People are putting the hammer down here late in the game. Other scores, it's Virginia was ahead of West Virginia 
and they still are. 14 nothing is the score there. Other scores in some of the other games, uh, McNeese State and Louis Northeast Louisiana are scoreless. Louisiana Tech leads now 9 nothing over Lamar. That's in the second period. Also in the second quarter, it's Stephen F. Austin leading Southeast Louisiana 7 nothing. Other scores, Jackson State over Morgan State. It's now 13 nothing first quarter. And it's Mississippi Valley State leading Prairie View. Now, Prairie View A&M is playing that game tonight at the Astrodome, but it doesn't seem to be helping them very much. Mississippi Valley State currently leads in that game, 14 to nothing. So that's the way it looks. Uh, that's the way it looks in the in college football. In the NBA, we have uh, Boston is now starting to stretch things out a little bit. They were only ahead by 10 at the half against Washington, but now they're starting to come on at the Capital Center and down in Landover. Other scores we have uh, Atlanta and. The Sixers, the, the, the Sixers are playing away from home. They're playing down in Atlanta, and they have a pulling away. They were actually, they were down by two at the half, but they've pulled away now. They're ahead by seven in the, in the third period. Other scores, it's Detroit uh, beating Indiana now uh, comfortably in the fourth period. Actually, that's not so comfortable, is it, in the, in the NBA? All right, very quickly, we'll run through the, uh, the NHL scores for you. Kenya Remchek has two goals. You going to get that? Okay, there we go. Kenya Remchek has two goals, but Boston leads Chicago 5-4. Brian Trottier has two goals, and the Islanders are hanging on. They lost last night to Washington. Tonight they're winning. It's uh, Los Angeles leading Hartford 2-1. It's the Rangers, 2-0 over New Jersey in a cross-river river rivalry. Other scores, uh, Philadelphia. Four different players have scored for Philadelphia. They lead Quebec, 4-0. Pittsburgh, 2-1 over Montreal. Buffalo is currently losing to Vancouver in Vancouver tonight, 3-1. Toronto and Calgary, one all in the first. St. Louis leading. Uh, St. Louis has just been tied by Detroit, one all. That's got to be good news in Detroit. And Winnipeg leads Minnesota, 2-0. And that's it right now for the scores. We'll be back with more all evening long, so stay with us. <laughs> Did you hear about McDonald's new McDLT? It could be the best tasting lettuce and tomato hamburger ever! Cause the hot stays hot and the cool stays cool. You get a quarter pound of beef on the hot, hot side. And the hot stays hot, baby! Crisp lettuce and tomato on the cool, cool side. And the cool stays cool. LT! The beef stays hot, the cool stays crisp, and the hottest taste, the coolest dish you can't resist. It's a good time. Hot, baby, McD! Only green taste! Cool, crisp LT! The McDonald's new McD! LT! Not so very long ago, the average four-cylinder engine looked something like this. But these days, four-cylinder engines look a little more like this. That's why we developed new Valvoline Four Guard motor oil, specially formulated to protect today's harder-working, more complex four-cylinder engines. And it won't break down, even after 7,500 miles. Times have definitely changed. So maybe it's time to change your oil to new Valvoline Four Guard. At halftime, Bob Lee reporting, we will have a new number one team in college football because of what happened this afternoon in Columbus. 22-13, Ohio State over Iowa. It was a day of defense for the Buckeyes and turnovers for Iowa. Sonny Gordon blocking an Iowa punt through the end zone for the safety right off the lens. 5-0 Buckeyes. And then William White picks off Chuck Long, who threw three times for the interception of the first half. John Woolridge would get a touchdown run off of this for a 12-0 lead. It was a 15-7 lead for the Buckeyes. Long here completes a pass to Pete Halverson in the final half, but he fumbles it right away. Five critical turnovers today. It was 22-7 off of this turnover. 22-13 in the closing seconds, and Long going desperately for something that just won't happen. Chris Bielman picks off his second interception of the game. And so 22-13, Ohio State now with a 20-game home winning streak at Ohio Stadium. And Columbus has the longest home winning streak in the country. What a wild time they had today in Tallahassee. This is a series that always the visiting team dominates. Hurricanes of Miami have now won eight of nine times. They've gone into Doe Campbell Stadium, and the reason today, that gentleman, Vinny Testaverde, he had two touchdown throws in the fourth quarter, 339 yards on the day. This game, as we join the highlights, tied at 7-7 seven and seven now early in the game, first quarter. Testaverde airing it out, 39 yards to Brian Blades, and the Hurricanes on the road leading at 14-7 first quarter. Then Seminoles get momentum. John Hadley with the block of the punt. Brian Davis recovers. And Florida State at home builds a 10-point halftime lead with Testaverde on the comeback trail. 30 yards here to Mike Irvin. And a one-point Hurricane lead late in the game. Then they add the insurance tally they needed. Testaverde, two yards here, rolling out and gets to Brad Perryman. 35-27. 
at final score today. And so Seminoles may be dropping down just a tad. North Carolina State today with an upset over the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Haywood Jeffries had two late uh, touchdown catches. We'll be seeing South Carolina at 4-4. Four and four. And Florida State looking to get back on the winning track, having just had that win streak snap today. That's next week, next Saturday at 7.30 Eastern Time. And a reminder, we have got... Thanksgiving night action coming along here. It'll be back to College Station for the big traditional bonfire. When the Longhorns come into College Station to take on the Aggies, Thanksgiving night, it all begins at 8 Eastern time. So after you finish your turkey, tune in for some college action. That score was interesting today. Notre Dame over Navy, 41-17, and one an afternoon for Alan Pinkin, who traditionally eats up the Navy defense the fourth time in his career that he's had a 100-yard game against the midshipmen. Notre Dame leading at 13-10. Alan Pinkett, there he goes, en route to 161-yard day. 34 yards right here, and they would get the touchdown subsequently and lead 20-10. With that 20-10 lead, Pinkett gets his third TD of the game. And that final 41-17, Pinkett, by the way, scored his 50th career touchdown today in that winning effort. Other scores from around the top 10. Penn State, 16-12 today over B.C. A deflected pass late in the game returned for a touchdown by defensive tackle Mike Russo. Michigan tied by Illinois. That was a shocker at 3-3. Illinois could have won it. An attempt for a field goal at the gun bounced off the crossbar. Florida, probably the new number one team. They're 18-game unbeaten streak now, defeating Auburn in Auburn, 14-10. Bo Jackson with a bruised thigh on that game. Air Force easily passed the Aztecs, 31-10. Air Force, 6-0 on the whack, 9-0 overall. No trouble for Nebraska past K-State, 41-3. Tom Rathman and Paul Mills each scored a couple of touchdowns. Again, no trouble for number nine. Oklahoma past Kansas, 48-6 to uh, six in that game. Freshman quarterback Jamel Hollifield rushed, rushed for 162 yards in that game. A quick check of what's happening among the top ten teams in the country. No pass, no play. That is the word in Texas. Two facts of life. High school football is king in Texas. And secondly, there's increased attention on the importance of academics as it relates to athletics. In the Lone Star State, it is now a fact. If you do not pass your six-week courses and get C's at least, you cannot play interscholastic athletics or take part in any high school extracurricular activities. Governor Mark White, a big booster of that bill. We had a select committee in, on public education in Texas which studied the educational programs here for over a year. Uh, it was their suggestion that we increase the standards for students throughout our school system. One of those was to make certain that extracurricular activities wouldn't be the first call on a student's time. That we're going to work first and then we'll play later. And that we were spending far too much of our time on play and not enough on work. So the no pass, no play rule was adopted by our Texas legislature. And we're enforcing it now to make certain that young people who go to school to learn are going to learn. And there's plenty of time to play. It certainly has an effect on us because uh, we'll, we'll go out right now the guys we've had some people that we were looking at who are ineligible at this time and we'll have to evaluate them on early season games i think one of the the things it will do though i think at some point in time it it, it puts some burden back further down the line for these young men that, that come to us and i think particularly an emphasis on academics where uh, a young man that we go recruit has already been in a situation where academics has really been st stressed and the importance of maintaining a grade point average in solid subjects has been emphasized. And, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, coaches don't get the credit. I I've never known a coach that didn't try to promote academics to his players. I spent a big part of my time talking to people about going to class and uh, finding out how they're doing in their classes. And I know from the high schools that I go into, the coaches there have the same problem. But I think the burden is back on the young men at some point where they say, if I don't apply myself and if I don't uh, do the work required here, then I'm not going to be eligible to play. And uh, so you put some burden back on them, and I think that's where it's wrong. Well. High school football is king in Texas, but because of this law, two schools have had to curtail their programs this year. Other teams are decimated. Players aren't making the grade. Well, I've sort of got mixed feelings about it because it's it's kind of hard. I'm going to miss it a lot, so it's going to make me try extra hard. By taking books home and just study, do what I can in the past. And there may be some dissatisfaction with some little part, or they might say, well, we'd like to, a little bit of change here. Maybe this is a, a little bit uh, too harsh or something like this, but uh, I really truthfully believe that the majority of the people involved uh, support it and uh, 
I would be surprised, I really would be surprised to, to see a major retreat on it. I don't think that's going to happen. If there are any changes, I think that they will be in the, major, uh, in the manner of fine-tuning. Yeah, I think it's good. That's good. I think it's going to really force the students to study and not put football in front of, in front of school because, you know, football is not going to last forever. There is controversy over no pass and no play. A lot of the controversy stems from the fact that people feel that if you don't pass during that six-week period, you're ineligible for the following six weeks as a scholar-athlete in high school. Some people feel that is too long, and you should be aware that this rule, this law now in Texas, applies to all extracurricular activities, not just athletics, but to bands and to clubs and whatnot. The early statistics, 15% of the fall athletes, once the grades came out in Texas, at the varsity level were ineligible, and 40% of JV and freshman fall athletes in Texas ineligible. You must get C's, not gentlemen's D's, but C's across the board to continue playing. We have a 7-3 score at halftime with the Mustangs on top at College Station. It began as a rainy, slippery evening at Kyle Field, and it was evidenced early in the play. One of three fumbles in the first five minutes of this game. But finally, things began to settle down. Fourth and one, Reggie Dupart gets the yardage and just gets across for SMU. And so he breaks that scoreless deadlock with a five-yard touchdown run on that ensuing drive. Seven-nothing, the Mustangs on top. Later in the second quarter, Kevin Murray. It's called back because of the penalty. They had to settle for a field goal. The Aggies did by Eric Franklin, brother of Tony. And so we are at 7-3. The Mustangs on top, number 18 team in the country. In just a second, back we go to College Station. I'm going to give you a choice, a fabulous dinner with me or a million dollars. Of course, this isn't just my generosity. It's part of Canada Dry's million dollar sweepstakes. I adore Canada Dry ginger ale. It's deliciously less sweet. And who wants to be sweet anyway? So have a Canada Dry ginger ale while you're mulling over this momentous decision. Me or a million dollars. For details, see the Canada Dry Joan Collins sweepstakes display in supermarkets. When it's icy cold and the wires are down and they're spitting sparks all over the ground, you gotta go, can't fool around. That's why America goes with Prestone. A fresh fill of Prestone 2 antifreeze fights freeze up and rust up too. A radiator could look this bad after just 10,000 miles of driving on weak, neglected antifreeze, while the Prestone radiator looks this good. Get the Prestone difference. America goes and goes and goes with Prestone. We have a 7-3 game at halftime. We've got more live action coming up this Thursday evening. Back to the PCAA for the Spartans of San Jose State. Visiting Long Beach, California. The action gets underway at 9 Eastern time here on ESPN. And again, of course, a 7-3 game at halftime. The SMU Mustangs. This is a big one for Texas A&M as you look around the conference. The league leader today, Baylor, had the day off. Arkansas, though, a winner today. Texas a winner. And SMU is not in the bowl picture. So at Kyle Field, the fans of the Aggies know they've got to win this one to Keep their bowl hopes alive. Let's get back to Jim and Paul. Texas and Kyle Field. We're at halftime. SMU leads the Aggies by the score of 7-3. to three. And now let's learn something about this great institution, Texas A&M. Texas A&M University. Academics, tradition, and more. Clifford Ransdell builds grandfather clocks. For more than 40 years, he helped young people build careers in engineering. I could have been a reasonable engineer. But this way, in training students, I could multiply my life over and over and over again. Texas A&M. Academics, tradition, and more. Much more. And now on the field, what they call the Pulse of Aggie Land. It is the Texas A&M Marching Band. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the largest military band in all of the world, 280 strong, under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Joe T. Haney. Let's listen.
something about SMU before the second half starts. Engineering that shapes the future requires creative leadership. At SMU, our commitment is to excellence. In the classroom, in research, and in service to the community. The Southern Methodist University School of Engineering and Applied Science. Educate the few who will make the difference. I'm Charles Schwab. Over one million investors who make their own investment decisions trade with us. Here are a few reasons why. Bill, I got some advice for you. It uh, won't help your golf game, but it'll do wonders for your wallet. I'm listening, Jay. I've been buying and selling stock through Charles Schwab. Schwab, he's a discount broker. Right, I've been saving 50, 60, sometimes over 70% on commissions. Well, I've heard of Schwab, but frankly, I've wondered what kind of service I might get from a discount broker. Schwab will surprise you. I've never had better service or faster trade executions anywhere. And of course, there's no sales pressure. Well, good, I hate sales calls and I like to save money. Schwab sounds like my kind of broker. For a free booklet on how you can save up to 76% on brokerage commissions, call 800-228-6609, toll free. That's 800-228-6609. Charles Schwab, a Bank America company, member SIPC. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, that is Brandy Brownlee to kick off the second half. SMU on the five-yard run by Dupart leads. And deep is Rod Harris, number 17 in the middle. Statistics impressive for Texas A&M, except for the statistic that shows that they lost 105 yards to penalties. The rain has stopped, the temperature's agreeable in the 50s, and the ball game is in doubt. taken by Rod Harris. He's across the 20. Gets a good break to the outside. 30. Down he goes near the 25. Harris may have given them the impetus they need. Aggies first down at the 25. Jim, watch what Harris does. He takes a low-line driver and Harris takes us on the run. And he gets into the wedge right here, and he's going to break to his right. Roderick Jones, number one, is going to be the last man there. He saves the touchdown. Now watch what he does. He just kind of decoy, just to sit around and wait until he gets some help from his friends from behind. That happens. 71 yards on the return by Harris. Mark the ball at the 24. Kevin Murray is your back. And here's Tony getting a couple of yards only. Tackle by Keith Brooks. Texas A&M, study in futility. Fumbled the ball after eight plays the first time they had it. Had to pump the second time on the fourth play. Then only had three downs and punted the ball away. Six plays, had to punt the ball again. Four plays, intercepted. And then ten plays, and they got the field goal of 38 yards. Had the ball at halftime. Now they got second down and seven to go at the 21 of SMU. Betting 7-3, Murray got Tony out there to the right if he wants him, but instead throws across the middle, and the ball is complete across the middle. And that is Bernstein, the former halfback, now at tight end, number 29. Another local man out of Bryan, Texas, just about three or four miles up the road. Jim, this was supposed to be a screen to the outside, to the left of your screen to Tony. Murray just sees his tight end, Bernstein came in, Cases and Briggs are there, 54 and 44. But they pick up another first down. They're inside the 13-yard line, or at the 13-yard line. Jackie Shell looking on. His team had a lot of mistakes, but came out of the first half trailing by only four. And now the up and look at this. Cody all the way down to the one-foot line. Tackled by Frankie Thomas. It's a first down and goal to go to the Aggies. It's a beautiful play. They took the fake to Woodside. Watch Murray. He's going to fake a toss to the outside to Woodside right there and just hands the ball back to to uh, Anthony Tony up the middle. He gets down to the one-yard line. This team is fired up. You come back from the kickoff return. Here comes Tony. You saw the fake to Woodside. Tony up the middle. He's at the one. Now back live. Three men in the backfield. They give the ball to Tony. Touchdown. And for the first time, the Aggies go in front. And it took them one minute.
minute and 34 seconds after that 71 yard return. Quarterbacks get into play. Here's the handoff to Tony. They go over to the left hand side, and that's Wiley, number 58, that gets the block. Tony's in, and Murray looking in the background. <laughs> and that throw a touchdown pass. Just hand it off. Eric Franklin, 15 out of 17 conversion attempts. Make it 16 out of 18. And the Aggies lead 10 to 7 over SMU. There's Tony who scored the touchdown. Jim, just excellent blocking on this offensive line. They just they went to the left-hand side, and they're there. There's Tony for the touchdown. 10-7, Texas A&M. This Jeep Cherokee has some amazing things going for it. Room for five adults or 71 cubic feet of cargo. Doors, your choice of two or four. Drive, two or four wheels shift on the fly. Power from a torquey 2.5 liter engine. But most important, this Cherokee is all Jeep. Now get 8.8 .8 on 1986 Jeep Cherokees, Comanches, and Wagoneers. When you're dealing with higher volumes of information and need answers fast, you search everywhere for solutions, but find it hard to get on top of things. That's why IBM created the personal computer AT, with the power to push high performance even higher. With the AT, fast becomes faster, and the capacity to handle data becomes greater, all to help put your business on solid ground. The IBM Personal Computer AT, for advanced technology. CFA, Southern Night on ESPN, brought to you by Jeep Cherokee. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. By IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. The wild men are out there again. The 12th man roster, 11 men representing the able 12th man of Texas A&M. None of them on scholarship. They've got duplicate numbers of men who do play regularly and are on scholarship, and you've got to have a special sheet of paper with their names and numbers on it to figure out who's who. We know that Andrew Livingston standing back on his own four-yard line, and we know that Slater will kick off. The rest are not no names. They're all the members of the special 12th-man roster. Livingston wants this and gets it at the seventh. And look out, down he goes. That's a fine play there. It looked as though they might get away. But instead, the play was made, I believe, by Wurzbach. All right, Jim, remember you talked about Mudd going down and getting his bell rung? Here comes Mudd. He's on the bottom outside. You think he has any regard for his body, folks? Watch this. Here comes the runner. Here comes Mudd. There goes Mudd. There goes the runner. <laughs> First out of the 25-yard line. And out comes Don King, quarterback, Hashaway, the up back, Dupart, the deep man. And there's a fake to Dupart. King keeps the ball and is rolling out. And a tackle missed, and he bumped out of bounds by Domingo Bryant after picking up five yards. Jim, we saw the Texas A&M possessions. Now let's look at SMU. And can you believe this? When you look at these possessions, four downs and punt. 84 yards total, five downs at punt. They punt six times in the first half, SMU. Powerful offense with Dupart and Atkins. Over 200 yards a game. They had a total of 37 yards in the first half. Look at this, punt, punt. It's incredible. Second down and five, 10 to seven. The Aggies lead, SMU's got the ball at their own 30-yard line. And here's Dupart, but whistles are blowing and flags are down. Remember, Joe Thomas is our referee, and he's going to say illegal movement, so it's going to be second down and 10 to go. Jim, you know, we talked about defense at the beginning of the show, and I guess we hit it on the head. When you look down, you see the 181 yards total offense and 128 yards rushing. Well, we talked about four people, Dupart Atkins, Tony and Vic. Remember that? What about Woodside? Woodside has gained <laughs> 71 yards. He's gained more than everybody here, and he has just done a great job. The turnovers by a &M, plus all the penalties. That's why the score at halftime was 7-3 to three in favor SMU. Second down, 10 SMU. King back and throws out here on one hop. He's intended receiver Ron Morris. 
It is third down and ten. And the Aggies and their fans are pumped up. And Bobby Collins knows it. Head down on the sidelines. He's got a good, good team. Alex Morris comes in. And they take out a linebacker, Roper, on third and long. King on a straight drop back this time. Thinks he sees something. Gets the ball in the air. And it's an incomplete pass. Fourth down. And the Mustangs will have to go away to the fire to Baggy. I don't know whether that was Muller that hit him or not, number 82. But just take a look at the pressure. This is a straight drop back pass now. No play action. It is going to be Muller right here. He hits him, number 82. But he is throwing the ball. So it's fourth down. They have to punt. And it's Dodge Carter that kicked the ball away. Line drive, and that is Hawkins under full head of steam. This fellow can run two, and he gets the ball down inside the 50-yard line to the 46. Third quarter, 12.50 to go, 10-7, the Aggies lead. Jeep Cherokee has some advantages you ought to look into, like superior cargo room and room for five with a choice of two or four doors and four-wheel drive you can shift on the fly. But the most important advantage Cherokee is all Jeep, inside and out. Now get 8.8 .8 on 1986 Jeep Cherokees, Comanches, and Wagoneers. I'm Jimmy Connors, and it's about time you met my partner, my financial side. All successful people and companies have a financial side. Let's go, partner. But to really be a winning team, you might need Whoa. some help. We need some help. You need Bain Weber behind you for financial expertise, sound advice. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Bain Weber. You're awfully stiff. You've got to loosen up a little bit. Sunday, the LA Kings face Philadelphia Flyers in our live NHL matchup. The Flyers are at the top of the Patrick Division with playoff goals in mind. The improving Kings will have to be tough to beat the league's best goalie. It's more of the NHL's best, live Sunday, only on ESPN. Well, I'm all mixed up. I thought Halloween was Thursday night. There's a carryover out here. <laughs> First down, ball at the 44-yard line. The Aggies, single back offense. Tony's the man back. Murray to throw. And Murray has his man and throws, and that's the first catch. No, they say Nelson didn't get it. Jeff Nelson, I thought, had his first catch. Had another catch for a touchdown. It was called back, so he's still blanked for the night. They went three wide receivers that time with Harris, Walker, and Nelson. But on the, on the left of your screen, if you, you, you get a chance to see Anthony Tony going out. Now, here's the pass that does hit the ground. Anthony Tony went out into the flat. Don't, well, they don't, they're back to the normal offense now. But now, not one person went out there with him. Walker left, Nelson right. On second down, 10. Here's Woodside with all those yards. He's going to get some more. He's going to get the first down as the flag goes down. And that could add to the woes of the Aggies in the penalty department. Already 105 in the first half, and they're walking backwards now, negating that fine run of Woodside. Jim, I think they're going to have, if, if it is, if it's a holding penalty, it's going to be on the tight end, number 80, 89, who is Morgan. Well, add 10 to the, that's holding. That'll be a total of 115 yards against a and in penalties, and we've got 27 and a half minutes to go of the game. Jim, I think the man he was holding was Hummel, number 45. It was the outside linebacker on the left-hand side of the defense. It's a great run again by Woodside. But call it back, 115 yards. There's a 70-yard swing in yards gained by penalties. Hold it, hold it. Offense. Still second down. But it is second down and 20 from the 46-yard line of the Aggies. They're up by three. Out of the core. Great tradition here. I don't know who's more hepped up, the Aggie players or the Aggie fans of the core. Nelson, the man in motion, Murray back. Looking, swings it out there this time to Tony. Tony gets away from Hummel, and that's ball to put him out of bounds. 
Uh, Chairman, about eight yards, and I think I saw a clip that was not called. Excuse me, remember I told you a couple plays ago when they threw Tony to the outside and no one covered him? Watch it this time. Now they're going to a little slip screen to the outside. Here comes Tony, and he's got blockers out in front of him. Now 54, right there is Briggs. He misses, but Jerry Ball does not miss. Ball on the 47-yard line of SMU, but it is third down and 13 to go. Terrible penalties. They had a first down with Woodside. Now they're at third and 13. Two wide receivers right, and now they got to call time because I think something has been fouled up. 12.27 to go. The Aggies will regroup on third and long, leading by three in the third quarter. This Jeep Cherokee has some amazing things going for it. Room for five adults or 71 cubic feet of cargo. Doors, your choice of two or four. Drive, two or four wheel shift on the fly. Power from a torquey 2.5 liter engine. But most important, this Cherokee is all Jeep. Now get 8.8 .8 on 1986 Jeep Cherokees, Comanches, and Wagoneers. separates one company from another. Effort. It's what it takes to stay ahead. Effort. It's the difference between a job and a job well done. Effort. It's what makes Hilton America's business address. Football, the All-American Game. Aggies third down and 13 from the 47 of SMU. That is Murray. Gets the ball away, and the ball is caught Jay Walker. First down inside the 30, and Murray was buried. You've got to give Murray an awful lot of credit for standing in it because they just had him. It looked like they were going to get there, and they were just... A Second two short. Here's Shea Walker coming down 85. And number 24 is Reed that's covering him. Look at Shea Walker. Gets behind the linebackers. And that ball is right on target. And you give all the credit to Murray. First down from the 28-yard line. The Aggies leading and driving. Big third and 13 play. Not much there for Tony. Tony gets maybe a half a yard. Can you believe today that Bo Jackson got hurt, did not play most of the second half of bruised thigh, got less than 50 yards. Great chance for Long of Iowa, right? No, he was intercepted four times as Ohio State upset number one Iowa. Great chance for Byers of Ohio State. Wrong. He didn't even play today. And they're the three top candidates for the Heisman Trophy. Second down and ten. Bob Lee will have all of that after the game is over. Very back. Gets the ball. Whoops. Get behind his man there. Nelson's having a terrible time. Jeff caught one for a touchdown. It was called back. And then that's the third one they thrown to him that's not been close enough to catch. Well, this time Nelson is in a position to catch the ball except for one thing. Murray throws it behind him. Look at Nelson. He sets up. He's waiting. He's in a position. The ball goes to the outside. Almost makes a decent catch out of it. But then he gets hammered. Is that Reese number four? Yes, it is. Third down and ten. They had third and 13. They found Shea Walker down the middle. Three wide receivers. Murray, five of 14. Now rolling to this side. How about it? Nope. He's going to get hammered, and it's going to be fourth down. Now the question is, will they bring on Franklin? Well, he has been bothered with a hamstring, and I just don't know if he can power the ball that far, but he's coming out there. Jerry Ball and Wade Johnson, 80 and 34. Murray has time right here, but the defensive secondary did such a good job, he couldn't get it away. Now watch, here they come. Bing, bing, looks like a pinball. Oh, this will be a 45-yard attempt for Franklin, who barely made a 38-yard attempt back in the second quarter. 45 yards out, watching it, and it is no good. Off to the side, 45-yard field goal by Franklin is no good. And so SMU has successfully stopped the drive of the Aggies and take over. 
down by only three. Right now we're taking a look at the, at the field goal kicker in the way. You think they, you think they kind of try to guide the ball? Whoops. Well, he was just standing there, and that's not roughing. Thursday night, San Jose State, Long Beach State. A couple of Dugs, Doug Gaynor, quarterback of Long Beach State. Doug Allen, quarterback of San Jose State. We'll see them both on both teams here. One o'clock will be the start time Thursday tonight. First and 10, SMU. And there's Jeff Atkins, and he is met right in the hole by number 99, Sadler. And it is second down and eight to go. I thought for a while there at the beginning of this game that SMU may be able to run right at him, but Sammy O'Brien, the nose tackle, is doing such a good job. He's like Jerry Ball. He's all over the field. And remember, they used two offensive lines with SMU. The question is, can the Aggies stand up in the fourth quarter to this relentless and fresh troops? There is King throwing the ball out, and the ball is caught out there by Adamson, the junior out of Dallas, and he's got a first down for SMU out near the 45-yard line. Now, Jim, that ball got there in a hurry. This time, King really fired the ball to Adamson on the outside. I was talking about Sammy O'Brien. Just take a look at him, number 90. Now, he's being double teamed. That's Edson, number number 51, blocking it. And two other people kind of help out. Richards is there. McKinney is there. That's just what we're talking about. You keep going against those fellas, and they bring in the second line, which is bigger than those, and you've got to go against them. And that's been the problem of the opponents of SMU. SMU has called timeout. With 10-10 to go, Don King doesn't know what to do, so he has called timeout. Aggies 10, Mustang 7. And when we come back, it's first and 10 SMU at their own 45-yard line. This is where it all begins. The diagram in the team's playbook. But here's where it really comes together in Pack Stadium on Sunday afternoon, the game on the line. That, my friend, is the real thing. And when it comes to sports coverage, the real thing for me is right here, the sporting news. Call this toll-free number to get in on a special half-price offer. The sporting news delivered straight to your mailbox every week at a hefty saving. The sporting news delivers hard-hitting close-up action. And stats you just won't find in your local news or anywhere else. On-the-scene coverage of pro and college football, basketball, baseball, hockey, boxing, and more. 52 weeks a year. Call toll-free 1-800-592-6000. Save one half off the regular subscription rate. You pay in three easy installments of only $4.96 each. Call now, 1-800-592-6000. the weather, rain will stop, temperature I would imagine about 50 degrees, rather pleasant night to put ball in College Station. SMU first and 10, down by three, third quarter. Ball at the own 44-yard line. And that's King, who well last time now chooses to run and is going to be hammered after only a two-yard gain. Thought he had something there, but Holland and Howard, an inside and outside linebacker, put him down. Give a gain of three, second down seven. Now, Dupard, 132 yards per game. Atkins, 83 yards per game. Dupart has 23 yards tonight. Atkins, 14. That's a total of 37 yards between the two of them. We're so glad we put those guys up at the beginning of the show. <laughs> well, we said if they don't gain 100 yards, they usually don't win. But a long time to go yet. And that's Atkins getting out close to a first down. It'll be third down, and a couple as Colin made the stop. Jim, this is a trap now. We're taking a look at Edson, who is number 51. He sets up O'Brien right there, and then they block down with McKinney. They've got him set up, and here come the inside linebackers now. There's Holland and Kelm. Take a look. There's Holland sitting right in the hole. Didn't take the fake. Done number 79 attack. We're pulling into the hole. Didn't make the block. Third and two. Power eye shown. And that's King keeping the ball, and King is not going to get it. Well, he may. He may have it, but I doubt it. I would doubt it. And out here near midfield, I don't know if Bobby Collins with the three-point game is going to fool around out here. He's sending out his putter. 
Jim. Here's Batiste now. He's another linebacker that plays in behind Holler. Watch him fly. He's the guy that jams up right in the middle. He takes on the fullback. And when that happens, King has no place to go. Well, that was the man that finally got him. It was Todd Howard again. Carter gets the ball away. Hawkins takes it out of bounds at the 10-yard line. So the Aggies have held. And with 8.21 to go in the third quarter, it is still a 10-7 ball game. The Aggies lead to SMU. Ball game, pregame figure, very, very close. SMU 4-2-0. And the Aggies 5-2-0. Each has lost to Baylor. SMU lost 21-14. And Texas A&M 20 to 15. Baylor right now the only undefeated team in the Southwest Conference. Jim at Texas A&M, they're not excuse me, they're not running up the middle. Jim, they're running off the tackles, and this is where they seem to be getting because the the, the linebackers are overrunning the plays. All right. Hands off to Tony. Nice move there by Tony. And on top of him is Keith Brooks, but that's good yardage. Out across the 15-yard line, about the 16. So we're talking about over the play. Here's T.D. Briggs. He's playing the center now in the middle linebacker. Now watch. He takes himself almost out of the play. I mean, he gets blocked there, but he overshifted the play just a little bit too much. He's got to read run right away and then set himself and make sure he's in a position where he doesn't overrun the play so he can take the cutback. Second down and just about five from the 16-yard line. And here's Tony again. Whoops, now Hummel does not overrun that. Thank you, pardon. T.D. Briggs does not overrun the play. He's right there for a good stop. Look at this. The Aggie fullbacks, this is what they've averaged, 84 and 81. Vic has hardly played tonight, but Tony's got 60 yards. Vic, 18, and Woodside, whom we didn't mention at the beginning of the show, has outgained everybody on both ball clubs. <laughs> and has had one long run called back. 71 yards. Third down and three, and Murray's going to throw for it. Throws it out here, and Shea Walker does not get it. He was carried there by Mark Vinson, but no flag thrown, and I don't think the flag should have been thrown. And so, after three downs, the Aggies will have to kick back to SMU. Jerry Ball, now watch. He just takes on the guard right there. He just throws him away. That's Wiley, and he's in the face of Murray. Murray had to dump the ball quicker. They thought it was pass interference on Vincent downfield. I don't know. Todd Chance has not been one here and gets one here. Livingston back at the 37-yard line and he's going to, well, now he goes down at about the 41-yard line. But it'll be first and 10 SMU, the score 10 to 7, the Aggies. Remember, Dennis Connor, who lost the America's Cup, or at least he was a skipper a couple of years ago, labeled a challenge to bring back the Cup from Australia as war. Well, six American Simmons are now invested in, in a war themselves. They're competing, spending tens of millions of dollars to try to get, earn the right to win back the cup from Australia. We've got a big special tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. And then from now to February of 87, when it will be decided down in Perth, Australia, ESPN will have exclusive coverage of the America's Cup. From the 43-yard line, half of the hash away and Dupart of the deep men. And this is Dupart not having a good night and doesn't get too much there. Written down by Sadler, the left defensive end, the junior out of Decatur, Georgia. Both teams are rather young teams. See Dupart at 30 yards, Jim, and it, 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 say there's not much there, but he picked up five yards. It doesn't look like much, but it, it, you know he's like he's like one tackle away from breaking the big one. Right, second down and four. Adamson wide to the left. Band plays. Bands all on their feet. Dupart with the ball. Dupart does not get the first down. Very close, but about a half a yard shy. You know how hungry the Aggie fans are. Their team hasn't been to the Cotton Bowl since 1967. And they have a chance, a chance this year. The Baylor's undefeated in the conference. The biggest problem for SMU this evening has been the third down in short situation, Jim. And they're a better than 50% team getting the third down. They are not having success on third down situations. It is third and about one. And here's King setting up deep. And the ball is caught. That is Adamson. Check that, that's Johnson, the running back, 21. Oh, that's two part. 
Not get him right yet. That's too far. Number 21. Not Adams at 27. Jim, they had so much success. You see Dupar going in. They just faked to Atkins in the backfield. And King is standing back there. But look at how far Dupart is beyond the defender. He just has no chance. That's Flowers, number 15. If Dupart, if he leads him, it's a touchdown. But they're inside the 15-yard line. And the Mustangs are awfully tough. That's a tell of the ball club they've got out there. And they'd like to prove it. They're behind now. But here goes Dupart. And Dupont has a good run there and picks up about seven yards all the way down to the six-yard line of Texas A&M. You have a feeling of something that you talked about at the beginning, Jim, that offensive line is now starting to wear them down. Take a look at the blocking of the offensive line. Look at the hole there. Holland is there to make the hit, but he can't bring Dupont down. All at the seven-yard line, 4.55 to go. Third quarter, 10-7 the Aggies, but here comes SMU. But again, this time he's in the backfield. Sadler, the first to hit him. Howard is also there. And John Roper, another linebacker. Jim, here's another situation. Now, you had a second down in about four, right? Right. With the big, powerful offensive line that you have at SMU, why would you try to run a delayed play like that? With even though the speed of Goupart, just go ahead and run at him. You're in a four-down situation. Just grind it out. Also, the Aggies look a little tired. Not minus enthusiasm, but maybe a little tired. They get the ball again to Dupart, and boy, is he hit there. That looks like, well, I'm waiting for him to get up. Is that Holland? It is Holland down at the bottom now, getting up number 11. And very close to a first down, and they have the first down. They have to get in, just inside the four-yard line. And I can tell you right now, they're going to go for it. They either have it, or they'll go for it. Here comes the offensive line. We're going to see it from the side where they fire out. And, and there's Reggie Dupar. The hole in the middle, you can't see it from there, but from up above, it was there. Holland comes in and stuffs him. Where the ball is put right there, it should be a first down. But they say no. They're going to, I would go. Uh, King looking over. He won almost the short tie. King is going off. And now they're coming back. They're going to go for it. They've got Morrison back there. They've got Dupart back there. And I think it's, is that Atkins back there with him? No, Hashaway's back there. Fans are all up on fourth down and inches. You think it's an impossible play to stop. They give the ball to Dupart, and they do not stop him. First and goal to go, SMU. Dupart gets the big yardage on this play, catching the pass and running the football. Jim, you have to admire Bobby Collins for the simple reason. When they played Arizona, I think that they, they fumbled two or three times inside the five-yard line. When they lost to Baylor, they fumbled inside the five-yard line. This is an area that's been a lot of trouble for SMU. Mustang trying to regain the lead. They're down by three, but first down at the two-yard line. Atkins in there. Atkins with a... Oh, was he stood up by Sadler. Rod Sadler absolutely stood him up with a little help from Dana Batiste. Uh, Jim, Atkins felt like, well, I'm going to run now. I've got the big bulls in front of me. Just watch this. Here comes Sadler. Head to head, toe to toe, and down they go. And the man also in there is Domingo Bryan, number six. Second down and goal to go. Ticking away down to the three-minute mark of the third quarter. Dupont again, and Dupont is thrown down again, and that is Todd Howard again, number 73. Third down and goal to go. All right, Jim, here's the situation where you can still do that, do this with this power eye formation. Take a rollout with King. Give him the option. They have actually lost ground. They're almost out to the four-yard line. Jackie Shell on one side, Bobby Collins on the other, but it's up to the teams in the middle of the field, at this end of the field. Here comes the roll. Here's King, rolling, rolling, and goes on one hop in tender for Kobe Morrison, his fullback. It's fourth down, and now apparently they will have to go for the tie. What a goal line stand by the Aggies. First and goal from the two. 
And now, coming on is Brandy Brownlee to try to tie the game. Dodge Carter will be the holder. Twenty-yard field goal to tie it up. Look at this! It's struck. The Aggies first and two stop SMU from a single point. We have an injured player, Jim, and I can't see the number because everybody's around him. Is it six, Domingo Bryant? Here's the man who had three interceptions last week, and I don't know if he is the man who blocked the ball or not, Paul, because, again, everybody got up, and there was a horde of people there. Maybe a replay can tell us who did it, but that is Domingo Bryant down. And let's see if we can pick up a number. Uh, Bryant's coming off. It's, it's the block from the outside. Is that Domingo Bryant? Yes. It is Domingo yeah. Bryant to block it? But he's okay. He is off the field. The Aggies have the ball and the lead with 2.08 to go. Third quarter. First down at their own 14-yard line. Here's the situation. If you're SMU, you must stop them right here. You can't let them get any more momentum than they really have. That's got to give them a lift. Here's that man Woodside again, and there's another good run again. He's outrunning everybody, and it's finally thrown down by Derek Reed. But first down, Texas A&M. 85 yards for Woodside, the only man Paul and I didn't talk about. All right, Jim, ball. take a look now. Everybody's they're just getting excellent blocks all along the line of scrimmage. Woodside breaks a tackle there, but he gets downfield. Franklin Thomas, 29, misses him. And they're back in good field position on the 29-yard line. Oops, Tony's got no place to go, still trying to go someplace, and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. Hit by four or five different men bouncing off them. It is second down and ten. Here comes Tony now. Jim, he's going to be hit right in the hole. They're just stuffing it to the inside. That's Johnson. It, it moves him back, and they're going to miss the tackle. Harmon misses 56, but then they get some help. The pursuit of the defense. Rick Seiler is a new tight end for the Aggies. He's on the right side, number 84. He's very going to throw, and does throw for Shea Walker. No good at the 45-yard line. And Murray threw in a double coverage there as Ball is a man helping Murray to his feet. Well, the reason he's helping him to his feet, Jim, is because he's the man that put him on his rear end. <laughs> Watch this. Here comes Ball. Two people again trying to block him. They can't do that. That's Fontenot trying to get to him, 67. And look at Ball. Now, you I, you may be able to call that play as, as unsportsmanlike on it or roughing because he hits him with a forearm. Virginia knocking off West Virginia tonight, 21-7. That's in the third quarter. East Carolina losing to Southern Mississippi, 27-0. That is the final. And now third down and 10. The Aggies have to give the ball up. And there's a diving catch. It's not enough for the first down. Jeff Nelson's first catch is about two yards shot. So they'll have to kick the ball away, I would assume, with 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. Jim, here's the situation where you blame it on Jeff Nelson, the flanker. It was an excellent catch going to the ground, but he should know where the 10 yards is that he has to get. That time, Murray had excellent uh, pass protection. They got to hurry up punt. Todd Schantz trying to get the ball away and make it a good one. Well, he's not kicking well tonight, is he? That's the poor one right there. Well, he picked up about 31 yards on the punt, and they'll get the ball at the 29-yard line with 23 seconds to go in this third quarter. Jackie Sherrill talking to Shanks. Had a kick block last week, also an 80-yarder. You're the punter. All right. First of all, the ball centered a little bit to his right. But what he has to do now is get himself square. Square up with the field. He has time, and they're hurrying it up. And he just he brings his right leg. See how he brings his right leg across, Jimmy? He almost hits his left hand. When you do that, you're going to shank the ball. Which he did. Out of bounds at the 29-yard line. <laughs> SMU stop with first down at the two-yard line. Had a field goal block, but they got the ball back again. And here come the Mustangs again. Atkins and Morrison are your setbacks. 
And that's Jeff Atkins carrying the football, put down there by Larry Kelm, number 65, after picking up about three yards. Time running out in this, the third quarter. You can watch the clock with us. And apparently SNU is in no hurry to get another play over or off before this third quarter ends. Oh, we have a ball game. Three quarters are over. SNU trailing Texas A&M 10 to 7, but they've got the ball when we come back to College Station. Betty Dorfman before the Nikon One Touch. Betty after the Nikon One Touch. The Parfit family before the Nikon One Touch. The Parfit family after. Mr. Dennis Pinkstaff before. Mr. Pinkstaff after. This is great. The new autofocus auto flash Nikon One Touch. It's so easy to use, it's given thousands of people something they've always wanted. Oh, the baby's a week old. Got any pictures? Pictures they can be proud of. Data General asks, are you buying yesterday's technology? Data General, computer systems so advanced, we win more major contracts than any other company. Data General. Aha, there's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rob you blend on your fuel bills. Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of thermal protection you can have. It can help you save money on your fuel bills. It is an open and shut case. Owens Corning, our building product, puts your house in a bank. The essence of bobsledding. The new sled feels like gliding on silk. The essence of shaving. This is new Atro Plus, an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. The Plus is the unique lubricating strip that glides the razor effortlessly. You never felt anything smoother. New Atro Plus. The essence of shaving. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, we begin the fourth quarter with Atkins picking up a first down going off the right side. Getting across the 40-yard line to about the 42. As we begin the final 15 minutes, Aggies lead 10-7. Ball stands at the 42-yard line. Jim, when we look at these third quarter stats, they really haven't changed much because Texas A&M had them by almost 100 yards at, at, at the halftime. They have them still by almost 100 yards, 91 yards there. But look at now, when you look at SMU, it's almost a balance now, passing and running. First down, here's King, firing the ball, and has Morris over there, and Morris is down near the 41-yard line, another first down, SMU. Don King has not thrown effectively until the second half and late, and he has drilled the ball on two occasions here for a big first down. King now 6 of 15, and that's with a couple of completed passes here lately. How was that one to do far that, that on, a, on a third down and short situation? Now both Morris and Jacobs go wide to the right. First down. Mustangs moving the ball again after being stymied on the two. And Atkins runs right in and is stood right up. And that is Larry Kelm will do the standing up with a little help from John Roper. Jim, if you look at the at the offense now, what's happening? You remember at the beginning of the game in the first two two quarters, two and a half quarters, when Texas A&M they were standing them up and, and hitting the, the receiver, the ball carriers at the line of scrimmage. Now look at the difference. They're back off the line. They're back off about four or five yards, and Cal makes the play. Morrison got to him, couldn't bring him down. If he if he'd have been able to bring him down, it'd been open. Second down, seven to go. There's King going out here and immediately put down and losing the football. They'll dump. Whoop, they better get on it and do get on it. And they're going to call it a completed pass. And a fumble is never caused by the ground. Well, he never went on the ground, did he? That's, well, that's what they're saying. Five yards on the play, third and two. Putting a ball on 34-yard line. And no complaining from the Aggie defense. So it is third and short. And again, they're in two-down territory here. And in trouble because they've had trouble on third down and short yard. 
That is Dufar. Takes a hit but gets the first down. Took a hit at the line of scrimmage but gets the first down. Holland stuck his head in there but moved the ball down to the 30-yard line. Todd Howard, number 73, was also there, and Dufar goes into the hole. That hole was jammed at this at this point. Sadler is there, 99. Look at they're standing up. Here comes the defense. Now that extra drive from the defense by the offensive line gives Dupart that first down. Now watch, at, at the point of attack right there in the hole, he's hit. Holland hits him there, but Dupart spins off and picks up the first down. 48 yards for Reggie on 16 carries. Morris, the man in motion. On first down from the 40. Oh, my. No place to go at all. Sammy O'Brien. Now those tackles in there, and Dupart scrapes himself up off the ground. A loss on the play of about three. Tracks over his yardage. Make it four. Second down and 14. They'll have it at 48. That puts him down to 44. And that was at the Citadel. I had haircuts like that. <laughs> they stand. And their date stand right with them through the entire game. A lot of tradition here. Second down. King stumbles, handing the ball off. But that's okay. Because Atkins has got good... Running room there before James Flowers knifes him down, but that's the first down. Inside the 20-yard line. Jim, I think it's Thomas here on the outside, number 85. He just gets a sensational block. And when Dupart sees that hole, there it is blocking back into the inside, and Dupart is down to the 20 and picks up the 19 and picks up a first down. I think I called him Jeff Atkins. That is, of course, Dupart. Adamson wide to the right. 10-7, Texas A&M, and SMU's had two good drives. They failed to score on one. Right here, Kobe Morrison carries the ball down to the 16-yard line, where the tackle is made by Alex Morris down at the bottom. He is the converted running back, number 30. Second and 16. We keep our second down from the 16 and 7 to go. We keep talking about those two big offensive lines. They're interchangeable almost for SMU. And the theory is in the fourth quarter, that's when they begin to wear you down. The second line is bigger than the first. Here's King holding on to the ball. And will be run out of bounds. Pumped out of bounds. Nearly at the 17. So it'll be third down and nearly eight to go. Jim, when King sees this play on the film, He's going to hit himself in the head because as soon as, watch when he rolls out. He runs on a, on this deal here. Fakes the Atkins when he rolls out. There's no one out there. All he has to do is run. If he, if he doesn't hesitate, because Edson's out there, number 51, to make the block. But so so is Calm will make the, makes the tackle for a loss. Third down. They've got 14 seconds on the play clock, and they're putting new people in. 10, 9, 8. Let's get it away. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. He got it away. Here's King with the ball. Throwing it out here, setting it up. And down goes Dupont and Larry Kelm making the tackle. And Paul with the first down of the 19. Now it is a fourth down of the 16 and a half yard line. Jim, you cannot say enough about the leading tackler, Larry Kelm, because that was a screen pass to the outside. And Kelm did not take any kind of a fake. He knew who his man was. He was there and made the tackle for the loss. He is a leading tackler, a junior out of Corpus Christi. And now Brownlee, who had his last one blocked, will try one from 33 yards out. To tie it up. 33 yards out, Brownlee puts it up, and it is good. And we have a tie ball game with 10.22 to go. SMU has caught the Aggies. Texas A&M 10 and SMU 10. There are some special things in this world that only a handful of people can appreciate. You're not one of these people. But if you are, spend some time getting to know Mazda's new RX-7. But I'll warn you, it'll flat spoil you for anything else. Introducing Mazda's new generation RX-7. Its engine has the smoothest flow of power in the world. No one has a more advanced suspension system and no one offers all this at this price. It's pretty special, like you and me. There's a star in your life No one could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you are Where you're going you've always known it Where you're going it's make the law 
where you're going. It's exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. CFA Saturday Night on ESPN is brought to you by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. By exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. By the way, that is not a little slide there. That is the big Payne Weber balloon right here in College Station, Texas. Anchored just to the right of the score, left of the scoreboard in the end zone. Brownlee will kick the ball off, and Harris is deep. We got a tie game with 10 minutes and 22 seconds to go. And let's see. They'll let Harris pick it up. He does at the 10 yard line. Had a good. And he's going to have another one. Going to have another one. He had a good return of 74 yards to start the second half, and returns this from the 10 to the 42 for 32 yards here. Jim, with Harris, they kicked the ball on the ground. I don't know whether the, the, the kickoff team slowed down or not for SMU, but watch Harris. He's just following his blockers, and then he sees that one little crack, and once he hits that crack, he's in the open field. That's a kicker. Well, he's a freshman out of Dallas, and he's going to provide the Aggie fans with a lot of excitement before he's through. That is he in motion right there, but the ball comes back instead to... Briggs making the tackle of Woodside, comes back to Woodside, starting to say the leading ground gainer on the field tonight. And Keith is doing just that with 89 yards. Wouldn't it be ironic if he is the lone 100-yard gainer, not Tony, not Dupart, not Atkins. And notice they're using Dupart nearly exclusively here in the second half. They're going with their number one man there in the ball game. Second down and seven to go. Passing down. But they're going to give it to Tony. And Tony is dragged down by Jerry Ball. Number 34 will be getting up. He's down there. He's the last man to get up. You have a feeling with this SMU defense, you have Jerry Ball, Kit Case, and Briggs, and then the rest of the guys just kind of help out. Well, no, they, they play pretty good defense. This has been another great defensive ball game. We had one at Tennessee last week, 6-6 six, six time. Here we are, 10-10. Third down and six to go. The ball is the 41-yard line. Aggies are going to have to keep the ball for longer than three downs and a punt. They haven't been doing it lately. SMU will be in good situation. Now here's a throw over here, and they allow the catch. They say that is the first down at the 42-yard line. The catch was made by Tony Thompson, the young freshman out of Houston. All right, Roderick Jones is on him, number one. Here's Tony Thompson breaking to the outside. Watch his feet. Only one foot has to be in bounds. Oh, that is a good catch. It is. He's got both feet in bounds. Good call, good catch in front of the Aggie bench. Ball at the 42-yard line. That's how much time we got left. Nine minutes, 22 seconds. Ten on each side of the scoreboard. Tony is a lone setback. Murray is going to run the football, and Murray gets some yardage. Murray gets down to about the 36-yard line. A pickup of nearly six yards, second down and short. And he hasn't done that too often tonight. He is a sophomore out of Dallas. Jim, we, we talk so much about, about Jerry Ball, and, you know, he's a nose tackle. The quarterback's going down the line of scrimmage. The first guy that had a lick on Murray was Jerry Ball. King has 100 yards on 8 for 17. Murray, 8 for 17, also 84 yards. No one has thrown for a touchdown, although one of Murray's passes was called back for interference. Here's Woodside again, and he's very close to yet another first down. He is running extremely well. Another young Aggie, a sophomore, out of Vandalia, Louisiana, not Georgia. Jim, this is the man we're talking about, Jerry Ball. You're watching a classic nose guard. Watch this. Fontenot tried to grab his legs. Now he gets hit from behind by Wiley. And who's in on a tackle? Jerry Ball. That's a nose tackle, folks, not a linebacker, number 34. Don't you think he's a little winded the next day after a game, the way he plays it? Third down and about a yard, maybe less to go. The backs are split. Woodside and Tony, they give it to Tony, follows Woodside. First down and Tony stood on his feet inside the 25-yard line. Now they just wedged him out of there then and went right past ball. Here comes Woodside, 33, is going to go up into the hole first. And then Anthony Tony, watch this, right behind him. He's just hugging 
right behind Woodside. Woodside gets a super block on Franklin Thomas, number 29. And Tony is inside the 25-yard line. One of the rare times I saw Jerry Ball on the ground. They blocked him. Here's Tony again and gets down to the 20-yard line. A pickup of four. That will be second down and six. 8-10 to go. Jerry Ball again. What have you swept aside last time and not this time? The reason we talk so much about Jerry Ball, he is only six foot. But... <laughs> Here's the big butt. He Play weighs ball. 278 pounds and can move at that. I mean, he is so quick. Here's one nose tackle that may be short in comparison to nose tackle, but with his weight and his speed and strength, Jim, it will never hurt him as far as the pros are concerned. Super strong man. Second down, they give the ball. Oh, Tony has got the first down inside the 10-yard line. Quick opening play down to about the 6 with Roderick Jones hanging on and a flag back at the 16. And the Aggies are walking back. Offside, SMU. They're just breaking tackles here. Here comes Tony. Anthony Tony right up the middle. Jerry Ball was blocked out. They blocked Phillips out. Tony gets downfield. Roderick Jones saves a touchdown. They walk. It looked like he's trying to get out of the way, too. Number 85. Well, SMU was down here first and goal to go from inside the five. The Aggies are now here from inside the seven in a 10-all ball game with 7.37 to go. You know how many penalties the Aggies have? They had 11 in the first half, Jim. One in the, One in the second half, and that's the difference in this football team. Tony, the lone setback. Tony's got the football. Tony doesn't have much yardage. He's down to about the five. It is second down and goal to go from there. Jackie Shell trying to get his team off with the best start since 1978. In 1978, the Aggies were six and two under Ballard and Wilson, and they're five and two now. And it would be their best since 78 should they win this game tonight. SMU, well, they just don't lose too many games. Bobby Collins' his record at SMU is 35-6-1 in four years. They got a new wide receiver, Dillon, in their number 81. And they got timeout call. They got timeout call. 6.42 left. Big play, second down, goal to go, and they call timeout. Texas a and 10, SMU 10, and Kevin Murray says, let's take some time to find out what we do here on second down and goal to go. If you've got your mind all made up about small cars, then you're watching the wrong commercial. But if you'd like to learn about something special, this new Mazda 323 is built on an extra rigid platform to give it the right of a larger car. It could just change your mind about small cars. Introducing the all-new fuel-injected Mazda 323 Sports Sedan. So refined and so advanced, it's the road car of small cars. But don't listen to me. Try one. There's a star in your life No one could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you are Where you're going you've always known it Where you're going it's make the love Where you're going it's exceptionally smooth Niccolo Where you're going it's make the love Next Saturday, Florida State takes on South Carolina in our Top 10 CFA exclusive. No one has better college football. Live Saturday. Six minutes, 42 seconds to go. It is a flat-out tie at 10. The ball is inside the six. It's second and goal for the Aggies. And Murray to throw. And Murray throws. Touchdown. And that is Shea Walker. Walker with a second touchdown catch. Jones was there, but Walker made the catch. And the Aggies go back on top. Jim and Murray just, just stood back and fired the ball. Now remember, SMU... As we see a flag down on the field at the moment, they've already had one call back, but they don't anticipate this being called back. Let's see. Oh, now what is this? This is after the touchdown? It is. Yeah, Jim, see what happens after the touchdown. Well, Texas A&M, they line up their whole 
unit eight people to the left of the ball on a hash mark and they put the center the holder and the kicker there so when they shifted they just call them illegal formation not enough people on the line you right again so the point after touchdown for Eric Franklin becomes what would be the equivalent of a 25 yard field goal but it is a point after touchdown and let's see he does not get it now now was that something because now SMU should they score does not have to go for two to win they would only have to go for one so the penalty hurt as Franklin misses the point after touchdown and with 638 to go there's the Walker catch that set it all up Cheryl has to be happy about this but not about what happened the penalty and the missed conversion kick out here it's me alone against the course but in the financial world, you need all the help you can get. You need the Pain Lever Army behind you. Even golf legends can use some financial backup. Pain Lever is ready to roll, putting all its resources at your command. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Pain Lever. Now that's the kind of army you want behind you. Designs that work are designs that last. And a Delta washerless faucet lasts and lasts and lasts. When it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. So it works just as beautifully as it looks. Enduring designs by Delta for the beautiful designs that you live in. Delta faucet, we're first because we last. Sunday, catch a live indoor soccer league shootout on ESPN. It's the Minnesota Strikers against the Baltimore Blast. Live Sunday. All right, Kim, this could be a big, big miss here by Franklin. All right, here's the miss. You can watch the miss. But let me explain something that happened before this. Before that, they lined up with the center, the holder, and the kicker. They were at, in the middle of the field. They had the other eight players on the left hash mark, Jim. And when they shifted is when they got a penalty. Why did you even think about getting fancy and, and playing games? They're not going to try a, a two-point play at that point. They were just going to go for one, just line them up. I have no idea. That man that we just saw walking away may have an idea. Who knows, that point could cost him a conference win here because SMU's been moving the football. Uh, the Aggie defense is going to be called on one more time to try to hold him. Livingston back for the kickoff. Scott Slater, and we've got that 12-man roster out there again. They'll go flying around as they're going to bring the ball out of the end zone, and now throw it over and throw an incomplete lateral. Now to get a little tricky on the side, but now SMU will start from the nine-yard line. Mustang, with plenty of time to go, went for something unusual. And it did not work. Dan Livingston trying to throw the ball back out to the outside to Morrison, who was open over there, except the ball never got there. Livingston, I think, ran a little bit too far. He is a left-handed thrower. He just waited just a little bit too long. Excuse me, that wasn't Morrison. Livingston threw the ball to Morris. And I think Ron Morris was the man over there, number 23. Now, the defense of the Aggies are caught on the fans, but it's the defense that's got to perform against a very strong SNU team. Here's Don King rolling out and throwing. And the ball is incomplete. Antenna down there for Ron Morris. It is second down and 10. That stops the clock. All right, Jim, on a play like this, now when you roll out the quarterback, King, who is a right-handed quarterback, number one, and you're rolling him out to the left. They're bringing the offensive receiver. There's only one, which is Morris, coming out. So he has double coverage on the outside. If he's not open, there's just no place to throw the football. And besides that, King didn't get himself set to throw. Dupar, Kobe Morris in the setbacks. Two wide receivers with Elmer Thomas, the widest of all to the left. And King goes across the middle, and the ball is caught across the middle. Well, it seems like getting up, that has reached the tight end. The first time they've hit a tight end tonight, his 15th catch of the year, but more importantly, a first down. Reese is going to come down the middle. Nope fool around here. This is just straight drop back pass. No play action. Offensive line is holding in. King just hits Reese right in the middle of the field. That's, you have linebackers covering. Holland is there, number 11. They're not going to be able to cover a tight end. 
There's the time. The ball's on the 27. 16 to 10. The Aggies lead. And now a short drop. And they find Morris. And Morris has another first down across the 40. As Don King, the senior out of Dallas, goes to work very effectively. Not wasting much time. Double step drop and fire the football. We've had a tight end catch the ball once for both teams. Reese got one. And Bernstein caught one. Bernstein, but you're Bernstein. <laughs> John Roper is out, and Alex Morris comes in as a nickel back on first down, thinking that they're going to throw, so they cross him up and run. And that is Dupont getting a good run and getting yet another first down. Three plays, three first downs, and Aggie Man is down at the 43-yard line. And Dupont that time, that's number 90, Sammy O'Brien. They can't afford to lose him. But that time, Dupont came down and put a move on Larry Kelm, number 65, and just left him there. Ball is on the 47-yard, make it the 48-yard line of the Aggies. And as we said, that is Sammy O'Brien, the sophomore nose man who's down. Jim, watch Dupont when he gets in. Calm has got number 65, is going to step up, and he's waiting. Watch. Dip, dip, and goodbye. Picks up the first down. It looked like a helmet of an Aggie hit O'Brien in the leg. Score, 16 to 10, Texas A&M. As O'Brien comes off. Then we have to go back. What a costly mistake for Texas A&M on that extra point. Oh, yeah. And there was no need for it. First down. For SMU should they score a position point for two. Well, wow, there's a throw back across the middle. Intended for the tight end. Reese, and this time, King over closing. 5.22 to go. All King has to do, Jim, he's 10 of 21, but what he has to do is he's got to learn to set. He was rolling out that time. There was some pressure, but not enough because he had blockers in front of him. And Reese just did a delay the tight end and came back to the outside. There was no one there really to cover him except Howard, the linebacker, and he wasn't close. Up to 48, short drop, throws over here again. Jacobs, the man who's got it. Jacobs has got a first down inside the 20-yard line. That's the second time they've used that play, once with Morris, and now with Jeffrey Jacobs. A quick drop by King, a fire to the left, and the man's all by himself with the cornerback laying well off. The cornerback is Flowers. He's playing off, Jim, but watch what he does. He'll sit to the outside, and he lets Jacobs run to the inside because he figures he's going to have some help in there. Doesn't come. That's Larry Kelm, 65, who's a linebacker that gets downfield. Holland is downfield as a linebacker. But what Flowers is doing is, is forcing him back to the inside of the field to pursuit, which wasn't there. Five minutes ago, SMU putting the pressure on the defense of the Aggies. And there's Duke. Uh, that is Atkins this time running the ball and dragged down by Kip Corrington, the free safety. And that is another first down. And they move the ball inside the five. Now, SMU was here once before and came away with nothing. Jim You've seen so many games, what a little passing will do for a football team. Here comes Atkins now. This is the delay draw. Look at how far off. Kelm 65 is way downfield. That's going to number 10 making the tackle. 55 yards for Atkins. Power high. Atkins again. Atkins looked like he's going to get the touchdown and does. And all of a sudden it's a tie game. And a point after will make it 17-16 SMU. That's a drive nearly the length of the field after they try to rattle on the kickoff. Jim, it took him, I, I don't think it took him over two minutes. And here it comes. Atkins now and the power in his legs. That offensive line, the hole is there. Atkins hits in. That's Domingo Bryan, number six, that met him at the goal line. But he got over. Bobby Collins on the sideline as Brandy Brownlee comes in and tries to untie the game. They've already had a field goal block. Brownlee is in, kicks, and it is good, and SMU moves out in front. 17 to 16, 446 to go. If there's a relation for the Aggies, there are four minutes and 46 seconds left. It looks to try to come back. Well, somebody's happy to be going to work. I love my job. <laughs> I wish I could say that. Bob. I know. Look for a better job in the, the National, National Business, Business Employment, Employment Weekly. Weekly. 
see the best jobs available everywhere in the country. Professional, managerial, technical, that's you, at top companies. Nice salaries. 25000 a year and up. There are articles to help you land a better job, how to look good in interviews, write a better resume, and the reason I still read it, articles to help you do better on the job. Mm. How to handle office politics, when to ask for a raise, how to deal with an impossible boss. Okay, I'm convinced. I'm a National Business Employment Weekly reader. Don't make a career move without it. Ask for the National Business Employment Weekly at your newsstand. Or if you prefer, get the next eight issues by first class mail for $32. Call toll free 800-372-3000. Eight weekly issues, $32. Call 800-372-3000 now. Right after our game tonight, College Football Report. I'm Bob Lee. We'll have a complete survey with highlights of the entire top 20, our player of the day, and our play of the game after tonight's game. Mustangs have just shown you some offense. 91 yards in a minute and 44 seconds. Once this game is finally concluded, Bob Lee will come around and tell you about all the excitement of today with our post-game scoreboard show. 91 yards in a minute and 44. A one-point game, 4.46 to go. SMU to kick off, leading by a single point. The a &M only has one timeout. And Harris has had some outstanding kickoff returns, but this time does not get back to the 20-yard line. And so the Aggies will start from the 19-yard line. And Kevin Murray and company will have something. Pivoto made the stop of Harris. And from the 19, Aggies will try to get something going. Again, let us point out what happened. A&M, after scoring the go-ahead touchdown, had a shift on on a point after touchdown kick. Now, maybe they were going to try to do something else with it other than kick, but they did not. The recall for motion had to kick again with a penalty. Didn't make it. Here's Jeff Nelson out here. He's back to the line of scrimmage and a couple more yards, and that's all. You know, made the tackle out there. Now, this is a flanker screen, folks. That's Number Jerry 34, Ball. Jerry Ball, a nose tackle, made the tackle on a flanker screen to the outside. He's incredible. Six foot, 278 pounds. I can't believe the speed of this man. He is incredible. From the 22-yard line, second down and seven to go. Talk about most valuable players. You might look at linebackers on both sides of the line of scrimmage or a nose guard and a linebacker. Here is Murray. Gets the ball, and now he has got this man out there, tight end Sylvester Morgan. And Morgan's got the first down out of the 30-yard line. So that's the second time that Murray has thrown to a tight end tonight. Once to Bernstein and once to Sylvester Morgan. They hit King through twice for the tight end. They're just trying to keep it even. Lots of time left. Figuratively speaking, 350 and counting. But the Aggies are 70 yards away. But remember, a field goal could send them ahead. They only have one timeout. SMU's got two. And now there's Keith Woodside. Oh, it's another good run for Woodside out to the 40-yard line. He has had an outstanding night. They'll mark it, I believe, just shy of the first down. But it'll be second and inches. Anthony Tony is out in front of him. Look at Woodside. The guards are pulling. That's Trace McGuire, number 61, blocking. What a great block by McGuire. Thank you. He picked up nine yards. 103 yards for Keith Woodside on 11 rushes. He is the rushing star of the night. And now Tony picks up the first down and is buried at about the 43-yard line. Eric Franklin, who missed what was the equivalent, as we told you, of about a 25-yard field goal for the point after touchdown after the penalty, may have a chance to win this ball game if the Aggies can continue this march. Just over the 43-yard line, shot him down to three minutes to go, exactly three minutes left in the game. First and ten Aggies. Brain time, Jim. Murray throws it on the sideline. Walker, who's been doing a good job, taken out of bounds by Derek Reed after picking up about six yards. And that stops the clock along the sidelines. Good choice of play. Yardage gain, stop the clock. Now you can back with Woodside. Tony Thompson comes flying in to replace Shea Walker with the play. That's the advantage of college football, Jim, on the first down play. You get, it, you get the clock stopped to move the change, and it's almost, you know, saving up for those. You get some time out during the game. All right, it's to Tony. Tony's got some running room. Tony's got a first down. 
Back down by Tim Green, number 17. Jim, I think that, that Woodside, number 33, gets a good block up on the top side. Look on the outside. He does. He just takes the linebacker on the ground. That's Cheek 79. The Tony just outran him.